Okay. Uh, I'll stop. Stop. Okay. Okay, I got live screen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to Bible Discovery Center's presentation. This week has just been an amazing week, and I want to welcome you and thank you for being with us and joining us this morning. On behalf of our co-founders, Angela K. Powell of Illinois and Garrett Christie of Maryland, we want to welcome you this morning. We're in Belleville, Illinois, United States of America, and we count it a blessing to be with you today. We're uh, streaming along with the 61st session of the General Conference of Seven-Day Adventists. God has blessed us to have a virtual booth there. We encourage you to go by and see the booth, do a uh, go into the photo booth and take your picture, invite your friends, let everyone know what we're doing and watch the proceedings of the uh, sessions. It is very interesting, very informative. My name is Sharon Petaway and I'm from Maryland and I will be your host for this morning. So good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Please go ahead and enter your prayer request in our chat room and any comments that you might have. If you need for us to contact you, just let us know. Put your email address in if you want, or just go to BibleDiscoveryCenter.com and contact us through that uh, entry. Uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and have our prayer by our prayer warrior, Sister Audrey Smith of When We Pray Ministries. Uh, Sister Audrey, would you cover us in prayer this morning? Yes, amen. Let us pray. Oh God, our heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, thanking you, O God, for taking us safely through another night again. Lord, we are here this morning. As we come, I pray, O God, that if there's anything that we have done, any sin, Lord God, anything that would prevent our prayers from coming up to you this morning, I'm asking you, yes, God, please to forgive us and to cleanse us and to help us to be acceptable before you. We want to thank you, O God, for the opportunity that Lord, you have spared our lives again. We are here not because of anything good we have done, but because of your goodness, because of your mercies. Lord, I just want to thank you. I know that there are so many people who took their last breath last night, but we are here. You have spared our lives for a reason. Help us, oh God, to live so that, oh God, others can see you in us. If we cannot preach like Paul, help us to live, oh God. Help us to do our part. Father, as we, I want to lift up this conference, this general conference session that is going on before you. Father God, I pray that you will just be with your people, that your will, oh God, will be done. I pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will just take a hold of everything that is going on. I pray for all the different prayer ministries and the different um services that's been offered. Father, I just pray that you show up for your people, I ask you. I pray, oh God, that as we come before you this morning, that the message that you have placed on our speaker, Chaplain Barbara Harris, that Lord God, it will be able to water our souls. I pray, oh God, that as she pray, oh God, for health and wellness, that Lord God will live. Lord, help us to take care of this body that you have blessed us with. Father, you said, oh God, that you have created us in your own image. Help us, oh God, not to destroy our bodies with things that we know, oh God, that is not right for our bodies. I pray that you bless us this morning, that you be with your people. Speak to your people today, oh God, and help us that as we continue to look to you, as we continue to trust in you, that Lord God will hold on to you and that will never let go. I pray that you order our steps. I pray that you, oh God, that you search us and that you, oh God, direct every aspect of our lives. Father, we surrender everything to you today. I pray each person that is listening, that is watching, will be able to be closer, drawn to you. Bless the speaker. Bless us all today, oh God. Direct our path 
Father, we know that there are so many things are going on in the world. So many people are struggling, are suffering, Lord God. But Lord, help us to know that you are still God. You are still in control. We thank you for hearing. We thank you, Lord, knowing that you are there always willing and ready to hear us no matter what time of the day or night we come to you we thank your god for your goodness and your mercies towards us father please bless us today and let whatever it is that being said and done today be said and done to your name's honor and glory for christ's sake amen 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 thank you sister audrey for praying us in this morning god be with you today i know that your schedule does not permit you to stay with us for long, so we just look forward to seeing you the next time. But thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Okay, thank you. All right, at this time, I would like to go ahead and uh, in, let you know who our speaker is. I'm going to introduce her at this time so that we can go ahead and get started. We want to get every inch, we want to get every minute of what God has given her to share with us this morning. Chaplain Barbara Harris currently resides in Decatur, Alabama. She was raised in Newcastle, Delaware, and later graduated from Pine Forge Academy in Pennsylvania. In the summer of 2015, she received a Master of Pastoral Ministry from Andrews Theological Seminary. She is a healthcare chaplain, ecclesiastical, endorsed by the Seventh-day Adventist North American Division. She finds it a joy to teach and minister to those that she comes in contact with. She has served the Adventist Church faithfully in ministry for 40 plus years. Since retirement from the Reading Medical Center, Elder Cumberbatch Harris has traveled nationwide and worldwide as a biblical historical storyteller. In addition, she has been active as an emergency medical technician, home economics teacher, and Camp Daniel L. Davis Village Director. She is also recognized as an alteration specialist for her cash passion for designing and making wedding and prom dresses. Elder Barbara is also a member of Lydia Bond Ministries and a very valued planner and executor of any ministry projects that we have. Uh, she has come to Baltimore and has personally done nursing home visits with us on a regular monthly basis and dressed the part of biblical characters and the residents, the patients there enjoyed her immensely. They would applaud when she walked in the room. She's also a sought after speaker and a seminar presenter who continues to work for our Lord's soon coming kingdom. She is a world traveler and loves meeting new people. She considers her relationship with God her greatest accomplishment in life, and she has demonstrated commitment in all aspects of her life. And with that, I ask you to pray while she presents uh, this morning her pre presentation on health and wellness, Chaplain Barbara Cumberbatch Harris. Thank you so very much. It's so good to be a part of the gospel of being able to help Press forward toward the mark. And I, I thank you, my sister, um, I'm sorry, Sister Sharon. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous, I don't know why. But I enjoy talking with her and I have been enjoying these meetings. Um, we're gonna miss this. So we're gonna have to figure out later on how we can keep this, um, this piece going. So this morning, I wanna talk about happiness. I'm gonna come, to the other, another piece in the next half hour on health. But this is health too, because this has to do with outlook, how we look at things, how we grasp whether we are happy or not sad or sad. And so I'm going to use a few scriptures and then I'm going to read um, about the happiness, the habit of happiness. And Jeremiah 29, one says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. And that is in Jeremiah 29, one, our father and our God, we thank you, thank you, thank you for life, strength, health, and giving us an option because we could walk around with our face hanging down and sad and gloomy, but you let us know that there is a better way. And so this morning, as we embark on a different way 
of being happy on this Tuesday morning, I ask that you um, hear our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So happy is an elusive butterfly. It pers pursues directly. It flints away beyond our reach. But if we sit down content with what we have, it's likely to perch on our shoulder. Uh, perhaps that's why 10 to 15% of Americans consider themselves truly happy. As John Powell, the author of Happiness is the Inside Job, he, his take is happiness is not like putting so many Cohen's into a happy dispensing machine. And then suddenly out comes the candy bar of happiness. Happiness, he says, is an inside job. To, sorry, to the extent that we think our happiness will come from outside things or other persons, our dreams are destined to die. The sad fact is that almost half of all first-time marriages end in divorce, as do 65% of second-hand marriages. Delusional, delusion always seems to follow where we expect someone like a friend or a spouse to sometimes make us happy. Yet we are all capable of acquiring the habit of happiness, regardless of the depressing world in which we live. When we watch television and what's happening around us, whether it's a child or a spouse abuse, or chemical depression, or children being wiped out in the school, or those in supermarkets, or teen teenager pregnancy, or gangs, or um, bulging prisons, the wars, AIDS, it is not surprising that the World Health Organization has singled out depression as the world's most widespread disease. One, so, one third of all Americans awake up depressed every day, but you don't have to be one of them. Are you happy with your job? Are you happy with your, the work that you do? This may be the most important question that one can ask that relates to life expectancy. Have you not been happy with your job? Then you should either get happy or guess what? Change your job. Are you happy at home? Then invite Christ in. With Jesus in the family, Perhaps you can finish that song if you grew up in the church or in a home like ours. With Jesus and the family, happy, happy home. So are you happy with yourself? You can become the person that you and God want to be. But regardless, God still loves you. So why don't you, like yourself, if God already does. And so as we begin our journey this day, I suggest that we try our best to have a vibrant life. And throughout the day, by God's grace, reach out to others, help them to smile, find a reason to smile, listen to their story, and then you can share the blessing that God has bestowed upon you. Father, we thank you so much for the, the option of being happy. And Lord, you've given us enough Bible verses. And one of the, the other, another verse, dear Lord, is Lord, Isaiah 53, 6 says, 
all we like shapes, sheep have gone away. We have turned every one from his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So Lord, we thank you so very much that you're there. We are like sheep, but we don't have to stay lost or be aware that we may be aware that we're, we may not be aware that we're lost, but you are one who can lead us back into where we should be. And then John 15, 11 says, these things have I spoken to you that my joy may be may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Thank you again, Father. And then John 11, 35 and 36, Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved himself. So Father, we can do all things without complaining and arguing, and that we can find in Philippians 2.14. And so again, help us to start this day without complaining and arguing. We thank you for hearing and answering. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask that if each one would just kind of share a reason why today they are happy. Just to give you a head start, I am happy because my God, sometimes in life you feel like you lost everything or your family's not with you or what have you. But over the years, I've had so many friends say to me, um, they, they talk about the, the worm in the bottle, God, God, God will restore. Um, he will restore what the canker worm ate. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for the friends that I have because I, I'm going to tell you, I am afraid of worms. And I didn't tell them, and because we're talking about, say, five, 10 years where people would just call and say, Barbara, how are you? And Barbara would just go on and on and on and on and on and complain and complain about what was going on in my household. And at the end of the conversation, they would talk about the canker worm. Okay, I'm move beyond that I need to just kind of read up and see what it's about I'm afraid of worms and I'm like why would you talk to me about that Jesus I need to know more but in the meanwhile I am so grateful that God has I have a place to stay <laughs> and for my sister elder um Sharon she knows in a heartbeat I will get in the car if I hear that someone is grieving or going through the loss of a, a loved one. She, I'm in the car and I'm gone. It doesn't matter. Now I live in Alabama, but it doesn't matter if it's te Texas, I'm there. If it's Tennessee, which is just up the road about an hour, if it's Pine Forge, I am there. Um, two weeks ago, I went up to, up to um, Pine Forge, Pennsylvania. It's a good 12 12 hours, but okay, I'm a little older, so <laughs> I need to stretch every two hours. So therefore, um, it takes me like more like 14 hours to get to Pine Forge. My church is up there in Reading, PA. Um, whatever it takes. Why? Because my God, he has restored and I cannot complain. So if you will so kindly share with me what God has done for you so that we will all know there is a God. Amen. I, I, I want to start first um, this morning. I, I'm mm -hmm. happy to be alive. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just, just to be alive, to wake up and realize that God has given me another day. You know, and, and, and it, what I'm trying to do going forward is that every day that God has blessed me with, I give him thanks for it. You know, the, 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 he has me here for a reason. Yes. And just knowing that I'm here, I'm alive, I can go about my business. There are people who are laying down in their beds, can't move, somebody have to feed them. And here I am, you know, whenever anything it comes across my mind to complain, I try to use that same breath to give God thanks. 
because he says in all things to give him thanks. And the more we give him thanks, the more we talk about the goodness that he has done, is the yes. more he blesses us. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Sister Audrey. Oh, what Amen. a blessing. Elder Elder. What a blessing. Thank you. Yes. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Praise the Lord. Listen, listen. When you think of happiness, you think of an event. But when you think of joy, you mm -hmm. think of eternity. And 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 I'm I'm happy today that I learned to have joy. Amen. That Jesus Day, right and, yes. and my go-to text when I'm unhappy or I'm in my feelings I is John 14 27 and John 20 21 and they read peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you the world give it unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid and John 20 21 says then say Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even so I send you. And my joy come in going for Christ. Amen. 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 What a blessing, my sister. Sister coach. Yes, yes. We lean on him and trust him. And I'm not saying that there are times that we don't lean on him, but sometimes we just can't see the the light because it feels like they're just we're in a, in a dark place and um what a blessing i would like to share um if i may <clears throat> i am happy to have you on the line this morning and just very briefly i want to share i had had a uh, heart surgery emergency heart surgery and uh was not able to travel a few years back while my sister was still alive and she was in a um, a nursing home because of her illness. Now, this is a woman who used to be a policeman. So she was in tip top shape. And then an accident happened as she was a policeman that put her into rehab. And while I was not able to go, my sister, Barbara, traveled one hour, it was an hour and a half out of her way in making the trip to go visit my sister. So that was a total of three hours that she added to her trip to go visit my sister in a nursing home and sat with her for hours and comforted her and read scripture to her. I will never forget that. And that is the kind of person that Barbara is. That is the kind of person that I'm connected to in this ministry. And Sister Audrey being on the line and Sister Ruth Ann being on the line and my most recent friend in Christ, uh, Sister Co Coach K. God has just blessed me immensely with some amazing people who just support me and hold me up. So I am happy for that. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much. And I think your sister was in North Carolina or South Carolina. What a blessing. North Carolina. North, North I think it was even more than an hour and a half out of your way. I think it was more like two and a half hours now that I think about it. So, but I, I remember you for that every time I see you. My God, he's able. You see, and I tell you, if you're living on a, <laughs> social security <laughs> and, and you don't have very much coming in i mean they they build you up you're going to retire and you're going to get x amount and what have you <laughs> um it's really not much to live on so I, I cannot even tell you how i get from point a to point b and actually and living up in pennsylvania um there's been many times where i've gone down to the carolinas and to florida when I get that phone call, or if I happen to be on Facebook at one o'clock and two o'clock in the morning, because, you know, okay, I'm not supposed to be up that late because I'm all about health, y'all. <laughs> I'm all about health. I don't know why I'm up. At, yes, I'm writing some papers for Andrews. But for the most part, if I see that sister so-and-so or a child says, my dad just went in the hospital, we don't know. The Holy Spirit speaks to you and he can tell you the end from the beginning. Just know I'm in the car and I'm down the road. All I know is it is Jesus who puts fumes in that in that car to get me to where to where I am going. And so I'm grateful. I just have so much to thank God for. Amen. And happy and joyful. Yes, because joy comes from God. All right. Amen. Would someone else please share? 
if we invest in these minutes, these are precious minutes to invest in how God, he has, he has blessed you and you have a reason to be happy. Amen. Amen. Okay. If you don't have a reason, perhaps you have someone in your house and you can share their story. How about that? Yes. My sisters who have just joined the line since our uh, sister has opened the line to us to give while we are happy, while we are happy for those who are just joined the line and don't know what's going on. Please tell us your testimony. Why are you happy this morning? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 My name is Grosvenor Smith, and um, from listening, I'm so happy. Even though my family is very small, I'm still happy that for the whole COVID-19, we didn't have to basically deal with any loss of life during the whole COVID-19. So. I didn't have to go through that grieving, grieving process of it. So I'm very happy for that. And I'm happy that my mother has been with me, even though she was working in the beginning or she, she's unable to work. So I'm still happy also that she's out of the home, going to COVID, going to work. So I'm just grateful for all of that. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much. We don't take this for granted because we only get one mom. And we have aunts and uncles, oh, that's fine. And church members, and that's fine. But having our mom, what a blessing. Yes. What a blessing. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to share that I'm happy. As Sister Audrey said, I'm very happy to be alive. I am happy that the Lord that I know is able and nothing is impossible for him. I'm happy that he, his mercies for us, his mercies toward us is new every morning. He does not give us leftover mercies. And for that, I just, I'm truly happy to be here this morning with new mercies from him. So for Amen. that, I'm happy. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Coach K, for sending me the, the, um, the text message. Thank you. I'm happy that you did. You're welcome. I've been missing you. <laughs> I was like, where's Phoebe? <laughs> Amen. Matthew 6.21 says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So we have so much, so many reasons to have joy. We have, a, we can have that desire or our outlook for today or the rest of the week because God has blessed us over and over. So it's worth investing. It's worth letting go of ourselves and what's going on and oh, oh dear me. And I think those who knew me in that my ups and downs, it was constantly singing the oh dear me, somebody done me wrong song. And I praise God for the presenters who give us insight and wisdom as to how to press forward. Yes, there'll be times that we, not just myself, will backtrack. However, we have a God who loves us. He cares for us. He has his, wrap, his loving arms are wrapped around about us. So early in the morning and throughout tonight, we are so very, very blessed. Right. I don't know if someone wants to um, want to go into the prayer line or I can go into the next session. Um, uh, Chaplain Barbara, you can just go right into the prayer line unless you want to stop and pray at this time. If you need a prayer, if you need to, us to lift you up, we can do that. Sure. Okay. Let's do that and yeah, I'll transition okay. into um, a different topic. Okay. All right. We are blessed to have Chaplain Barbara. We, sessions are, have been 30 minute sessions, but Chaplain Barbara is taking another 30 minute session. And we are just so glad that she did. So while she takes a break for a moment, I'm going to ask Sister Audrey if she would come back and pray over the second session as well. Thank you. Okay. So I should pray now. 
Yes. All right. Let us pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you again this morning to say thank you for uh, the session that has just ended. Thank you to Chaplain Barbara for her encouraging words to us this morning. Father, as we come before you about to go into the, the other session, I pray that you come for, be with us. You said, oh God, we know you're here because you said, we're, your word said, we're two or three, I gather anything touching your name. You're in the midst to bless. And we just want to thank you for your blessings. I pray, oh God, that <clears throat> you'll be with us today, that you continue to cover us, that you empty us of anything that is standing between us and you and let your Holy Spirit take control of everything that we do or say today. We thank you and we bless and praise your holy name for who you are, for Christ's sake, amen. Amen, amen. I thank you so very, very much. Um, just lingering a little bit on attitude of gratitude, Psalms 69, 30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. So we have a blessing. We, we have choices. And sometimes again, it's hard, but God, but God, he will give us what we need to get us where we want to go. I'm going to switch over to a different area of on health. And I'm going to pretty much focus, I'm going to read as well, focus on um, on coffee. I mean, not coffee. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the focus is caffeine. Caffeine. And I can just imagine some of us want to say, <laughs> that's not my problem. It's not my issue. Well, then again, I don't want to judge anybody, but it's so easy. I'm just, just watching what kind of happened in my house and other households and so on and so forth. Um, so many reach for that coffee and a, and a heartbeat to get the day going. So I just want to share a few things about coffee being a chocoholic and so on and so forth. So the scripture here is Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 19. And I'm just going to read a short portion. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. I think that's a wonderful way to start this hour, this, this next half an hour, that we keep our eyes focused on, on Christ. And it's not just about us, it's our family and those that we come in contact with. And so the author says, I'm addicted to chocolate. I don't like it. I love chocolate. And I don't know how many people on this line love chocolate. The creamy taste of chocolate cherries. The author says, mmm, for nibbling, there is M and M's. And on a chilly evening, there is nothing as pleasant as a cup of hot chocolate. So let me put in front of 30, just put me in front of 31 flares. Uh, flavors in a variety of cookies, and you can bet I'll choose something with chocolate in it every time. I've always known chocolate contains caffeine. Actually, it's a theobromine. It's a relative of coffee. I don't know if you've heard if, of um, Dr. Neil Medley. He wrote a book called Proof Positive. I've learned that men who ate 20 milligrams or more of theobromine a day doubled their risk of prostate cancer. And it doesn't take too much chocolate to reach that level. One ounce of chocolate has 48 milligrams. Two tablespoons of chocolate syrup has 
89 milligrams and two to three helpings of chocolate flavored milk is 120 milligrams. But I rationalize, she says, I'm a woman. What's wrong with a little bit of chocolate? They say it's good for us and everybody is eating it. I tried to overlook the fact that chocolate also contains carcinogen and alcohol. I have tried to give up chocolate before, but because it's loaded with sugar and calories, it's difficult. When someone passes truffles, and I know that's pretty big, uh, I think it costs, it's a bit more costly than your, um, the regular chocolate, it all, I always take one, take one, the person says. Then came the fateful day of July, 2001. I was holding a women's retreat and retrolling the self-discipline. That's very important. It's the key to good mental health. When I add it, uh, when I add it with great hesitation, but then there's the chocolate. After my pre presentation, Joan challenged me. I was addicted to chocolate too. My son bet me fifty dollars that I wouldn't give up and go with it and not uh, and do away with it for one year. I took the challenge, and I did it. Then. Without thinking, she said, I'll do it for another year if you will do it too. I was trapped. I couldn't say no. And now I've done it again and again. Giving up that bad habit is all a matter of choice. God says he will not allow us to be tempted more than we are able to resist. But I've learned that when making a habit change, it sure will help us to make a commitment to someone you respect and then ask God to help you honor it. Is there anything that's nagging you? Is there a habit in your life, ladies or elders, that we like to give up? I suggest, suggest that we work on letting go of that chocolate and caffeine. I'm going to tell you some of the things, if you're wired to caffeine, some of the things that may come your way. It will, and I'm sorry, I don't have a PowerPoint. I might do, but I don't know how to attach it. Oh, sorry. Elevated blood sugar. We don't want that. We do not. Increased stomach acid secretion, increased blood pressure. I don't know how old the average age group is on our on our group, but we all may be in that time frame where <laughs> we we take that blood uh, cuff and put it on, or we talk about a headache, blood pressure increase with caffeine. Elevated blood fats, that's triglycerol. Heightened symptoms of PMS. So if you, or maybe you know a young person who's complaining of cramps and all that goes with it, might wanna look at that chocolate piece. Tremors initially and nervousness. The aggravation of anxiety disorders and panic attacks. Did you know that? I don't know that we realize that when we have a panic attack, we lose control and our family trying to figure out, try to figure out what's going on, what just happened. <laughs> we may have had something in our system that we might want to get rid of or replace it. Of course, if you take something out that hole, put something else in. It also causes urinary tract, uh, urinary calcium and magnesium losses. Believe it or not, it causes insomnia. It causes irregular heartbeats. 
Let me say that again. Caffeine can cause ir ir uh, irregular heartbeats. And last but not least, in increased stimulation of the central nervous system, it overrules the need for rest. That's quite a bit for, we to, for us to look at. Our bodies are being damaged by allowing us to, let's just say, first thing in the morning and maybe throughout the day, just have to have that cup. If it's not chocolate, it may be coffee that's causing this, the nervous system to be off kilter. In times like that, the symptoms may, be, may cause chronic fatigue, fatigue, which I just said, and you will have lack of energy and the insomnia, it is persistent. So I want to encourage each one of us through the rest of this week, say, Lord, give me the strength. I cannot do this by myself. And if you have a partner who might just happen to make that phone call early in the morning <laughs> and you're saying, girl, I got to get myself a coffee because you know I can't do it without it. Yes, you can, but you have to ask God. He is there for you. He will lead, he will guide. And then before you know it, if you just aim for that year, it's amazing how that you will fall away from being addicted. And you don't even have to go a whole year. You might want to just say Jesus sooner than later because you created us. And because you are showing us the way, you'll send the Holy Spirit to give you the desires of your heart. So I beg you, ladies, elders, let the caffeine go. And even though you may just be drinking it, you just know others are watching. If you're in the workplace and you happen to run down the hall and put that little cup underneath the, I, don't, I forgot what they call it, but I know in the emergency room, people would constantly ask me, ask me for coffee. And I don't remember what the machine is called. All I know is you just um, put a little container inside and pull the top down and the water will go in a cup with the caffeine, I mean the coffee. And then I take it those, to those who are going through um, something, um, trauma in, in the emergency room because I, that's where I work a good amount of my time. So if you're doing that or you happen to have that machine in your house, someone is watching or even on your job, do your best to give it up. And it's not even about someone watching, but it's what it's doing to your system, causing anxiety. It's a difficult, yes, but God. Yes, but God. I'm gonna ask if there is someone who might want to share what it's like to feel anxiety. What, what happens to you when you feel anxious? And even if it's not yourself, just kind of share with someone else at your workplace how you may see you may see how their um, personality change because you can definitely see a change. But I know you can say, "Oh, not me! I got this under control." Oh, we think we have it under control, but others are watching and watching our every move, and they're quick to say, "Ah." thought she was dot, dot, dot. So anybody on this prayer line ever been through or watched or, or just have something that you want to give up? And of course, in trying to give up caffeine, there are withdrawals. There will be with, withdrawals. But God, but God, my mom, unfortunately, she's down gone. 
And I'm going to lead into forgiveness from here. She got up. My mother could not start the day without her coffee. And I don't know how many years she did it. Well, she died just recently, but she was um, 84. I watched, but I saw how personality changed. And she was kind of difficult to live with. But God, I don't know, maybe at the end of her last six weeks or something, maybe she let it go. But in the meanwhile, I know, and watching her over the years, it's not something I needed to do. And I'm switching over to now forgiveness. I am going to share this more so because I I think about our speaker last night. I'm encouraged because when we lose a loved one, it's so very, very painful. October 22nd was my mother's birthday. And I it was my mother's birthday. And I didn't want to go visit her because I've been visiting her every two two. Every other week, every two weeks, I was visiting my mother. So I'm leaving Alabama, but I'm going up to visit my mother to see how she's doing. This particular time, I did not want to go. My mother has a, a pit bull and um, a pit, yeah, pit bull. So he liked, he liked me when I come in. He would greet me well because I had doggy tricks. But on the way out, when I'm packing my bag, the dog would uh, turn to attack me. And so I, reasoned with myself, I'm not going to visit her on her birthday. I'll wait until next week or three weeks later so I can visit with all my cousins and have Thanksgiving together. My sisters, I am so grateful for the Holy Spirit. When I called a cousin in Atlanta and I said, I don't feel like going right now. I, I don't like the dog. And my cousin said, go. Life is short. Within three hours, I got in the car and drove to Delaware. So this is at this point about seven o'clock in the morning. So I drove up to Delaware. When I walked in the house, my mother's face was swollen. Her lips were every bit three to four times its size. Her tongue was swollen. Her eyes was as if she had mucus and sand in her eyes. She sat and talked as if all was well. All right, so I talk with her till about 12 at night to listen to her. But by the same token, I'm saying, God, you have to lead me, guide me. She needs to have um, autonomy. In other words, I'm not bossy, but something is wrong. Something is wrong. And so in the morning, I said, Mom, I'm giving you a choice. You had three choices in going to the, to the hospital. I will take you. The ambulance will take you or Trevor will take you to the hospital. What's your choice? She said, call the ambulance. So this was nine o'clock in the day. Little did I realize, okay, let me back up. On my way to Delaware, the Holy Spirit said to me, Barbara, you are not forgiving. You're not a forgiving person. I said, what? God, I forgive everybody. He said, you're holding a grudge and you need to let it go. Okay, Lord, what, what is this about? He said, the Holy Spirit speaking to me, something happened between your mom and your dad 60 years ago and you're holding it against her. I said, oh no, God. Oh yes, you are. When your father died not long ago, and the foster children came in and said to my mom, you had a child of your own. How is it that you got foster children? My mother leaned back and she said, do you know you're drunk, Uncle William? Oh, yeah, Grandma, we love him. We love him. He's all that. She said, I brought your un drunk Uncle William from Florida up to Delaware. And he signed Pop Pop's name. And that's how I got foster children. I was so angry. I was just so very, very angry, but I didn't, I mean, this was just two years ago. My father died two years ago. 
And I didn't realize, and it's not about me being angry, but I'm the one that was sent away to school. The foster kids got a chance to stay home. I am a clingy person. So if I meet you person to person, you're part of me, you're part of my family. I just, I'm clingy like that. But here now I was sent away to Pine Forge Academy. I kind of cl complained over the years, but when the Holy Spirit spoke to me that night, July 22nd, I could not help but ask for forgiveness. When I walked into my mom's house and saw that her face was swollen, I hugged my mom like I would not let her go. And she hugged me like she did not want to let me go. We don't come from a, a huggy feeling family. We, we don't even pat each other on the back. But this time we held each other. And I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit telling me what I had done and that it was not right. It gave me a chance to ask for forgiveness. 48 hours later, my mother took her last breath. I am so grateful that I listened to the Holy Spirit. I got in the car and drove home. We talked like we were sisters. And ultimately, of course, I just praise God. That's all I can do is thank him for allowing me to, to listen to the Holy Spirit and to ask for forgiveness. Had she died any sooner, that would have been a missed opportunity. And I find myself over and over throughout the day and throughout the week where the Holy Spirit says to me, Barbara, that's a missed opportunity. Now, I live down here near the Tennessee River, like two blocks away from me, and I see individuals who are hurting. Initially, when I moved here two years ago, when I moved here and I would walk past individuals and I would wave, well, sometimes I wouldn't wave because <laughs> 98, 99% of the Caucasian, well, they're Caucasian, and that's fine, but I would just go on because I figured they're not interested in talking. But the Holy Spirit would say to me over and over, that's a missed opportunity. And so I stop, I turn around, and I'll speak to, rather it's a husband and wife or what have you, but and their children involved, I'll go back and say, enjoy this time. Enjoy this time because you never know when you never get to see them again. And then I would talk a teeny bit about my, my son and my daughter, and they're 45 and, th 45 and 35. It's not necessary for them to have the information, but to pray with them and to see them smile and to see the children smile. I am so, so grateful to my father that he's given me a time and time opportunity to get it together. Stop and pray for them. So I stop in the mall. Sometimes you can see a person, their weight is, is, is their bear, their, their, the weight is heavy. And sometimes you hear them yelling at their children. Case in point, this particular lady asked her son, we were in uh, one of my stores, favorite store, Goodwill store. And she asked him, um, how was your day? And he, she's, the little young boy said he was about 12 years old. He said, I had a bad hair day, a bad day. We did doing English on the computer. I don't understand what the teacher is talking about. I got a bad grade, mom. I'm so sorry. And the mother kept walking because it's Christmas time and she's just putting stuff in the um, cart. And I walked away. I said, Barbara, no, I didn't say it. the Holy Spirit said that's a missed opportunity. So as they walked out the door, I didn't purchase any, anything, but about five minutes later, because it was raining outside and snowing. So I um, walked up to the lady and I said, I'm so sorry. I was listening into your conversation. Your son is hurting. Do you mind if we pray for him? She said, well, that would be fine. And I asked his name and I did short word of prayer. I also stated, I don't know my sister, if you use this technique, but I ask them to keep their eyes open so they can be aware of their surroundings. And then I say a, a short word of prayer. This lady had tears in her eyes. 
And I'm so grateful I may never meet her again. I'm sure I won't, but it doesn't really matter. When there is an opportunity, go for it. Worship to God. Listen to what he has to say to you. In the morning, ask him to forgive you or throughout the day. If it's every hour, ask for forgiveness. He hears and he will forgive. And outside of that, I just want to encourage you. Listen to him talk. He wants to pour you out a blessing. So please be still and be obedient. Father, thank you for the opportunity to share. Thank you so much for the opportunity to ask for forgiveness. We want to be in heaven, all of us. That's our goal. Otherwise, we really wouldn't be on this prayer line. And even, even being on this prayer line, your Lord doesn't guarantee, but we can go out and tell others, come, come and see a man. Come and listen to what God has to say, how he wants to restore us. And then we thank you, Father, for hearing and answering in the name of Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And amen. Amen. Amen, Chaplain. We thank you so much for sharing with us this morning. Uh, Chaplain Barbara is just a, a beautiful person. She's a beautiful soul. And uh, she speaks from the heart. She shares and she empathizes with people. But this was about her, which was very important for us to hear. It's always a blessing when someone can speak power, their truth, to because it gives them power. When they speak their truth in there, she's talking about how she had to forgive. And God wants us to do just that, to listen to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We don't want to miss any opportunities. We thank you. you. There's so many lessons packed in your message today, not just about health, but for the mind as well. So we don't want to miss opportunities. And we want to make sure that we're in a forgiving spirit. So we thank God for this message. And I'm going to uh, ask if we have any comments. We have a few minutes. If we have any comments about the message, and then we'll go into our closing prayer and transition to the next session. Any comments? Amen. Good morning. I just want to say thank you for those words of encouragement and the reminder that we, um, just how important forgiveness is. Um, I was really blessed by this message this morning, um, and it um, I'll be looking out and making sure that I don't um, miss any opportunities as well. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chaplain Harris. I mean, I, I, I mean, I was so blessed. I'm so blessed. You know, it's 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 important for us to 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 know that. We have to forgive others. We have to let go of things. Yes. Because, you know, it, it, it hurt us. It hurt us. And forgiveness is not for the person. Forgiveness is for us. And so many time we, times we hold on to things that's been holding us back. Yes. And, and, and God has forgiven us so many times. Yes. And, and, and we have to let go and let God take control of situation and he's always speaking to us yes we have to listen but we have to have a relationship with him for us yes. to know his voice when he's speaking so thank amen. you this morning i'm, I'm so blessed thank amen. You. amen amen i want to invite you i wanted to turn it over to coach k for the final thought and prayer and i'm going to ask you to tune in again tomorrow at six where chaplain barbara will be back with another hour um, just know that she's working on her doctorate for Andrews and uh, we're going to be a part of history because she'll be able to report that she was with us. So when she walks across that stage, mm -hmm. getting her doctorate, she's carrying a piece of our hearts with her. So yes. we're going to keep her in prayer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Audrey. Thank, Thank you so you. much, uh, Elder Ruth Ann. We appreciate your words. Yes. Coach K. Amen. Thank you. Minister Mother Sharon, I, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. And we thank you for the forgiveness you give us when we just don't uh, answer the text message right away. So <laughs> forgive us, amen, and emails, amen. But listen, listen, Sister Barbara, 
This is friendship evangelism at its best. Yes. A best friend shares what they're going through. And this is what the people need to know that though we are in Christ Jesus and though we praise him yes. and though we serve him, we have our sorrows. We have our disappointments. We have our time that we do not forgive. But what I would like to leave in, in, in just honor of what you just shared with us is, is, a, is it is written because everything is based on God's word, who is him. James 5, when we go out into the world and, 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 and to the 61st General uh, Conference of Seven-Day Avengers constituency and delegates and guests, this is what we could take to the world on forgiveness. James 5, the power of prayer. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. If any marry, let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Someone spoke on this platform about the oil on the nose. Was it you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. Yes, I did. Hallelujah. Lord, come on, give it to me. It says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. That's when you call for the elders. Because we are sin sick souls outside of Christ. In Christ, we are well, we are whole, we are peaceful. But let me say something. Sometimes we get in our feelings and we go to our sadness and our sickness. But listen, but this is the way that we can overcome this sadness. Confess your faults one to another, verse 16, James chapter 5, mm -hmm. and pray for one another that yes. you may be healed. Yes. The healing comes, physical healing comes yes. when we forgive. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But so when we ask for forgiveness, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors, when we ask for forgiveness, right and we give forgiveness we get two things we get spiritual and physical healing immediately why it's a mindset and then once we stay in that mindset then it it, it, it just it, it snowballs let me tell you how i know mother um mother barbara how i know is that you're looking at a person right now if you're seeing me they have had two strokes, one in 1984, another stroke, 2001, wow. 2019, struck by lightning. Have mercy. Have mercy. Then, as, as if that wasn't enough, that wasn't enough, a near head-on collision that sent my nervous system away. If that wasn't enough, working in a job that had mold all over and got mold-induced asthma, in Have which mercy. I am healed. I Have am mercy. healed. By the power Praise of him. God, I am healed. Praise him. Had, had to forgive my mother and my father. Mm -hmm. Had to give, give my brothers and my sisters. Had to forgive even my conference officials. Have to forgive my brothers and sisters that don't understand the zeal that I have, that God brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. After looking for love in all the wrong places, my story, God's glory, is that, listen, listen, God, yes, chose me. He did. I didn't know I walked the streets of New York. Lord, why in the world I'm in this world? Not to take my life, but why are these things happening to me when I do not offend people? Like you say, you just love everybody. Give me a hug. I'm a huggy person too. Amen. But <laughs> even in COVID, I'm a huggy person. How do I do? I give a bump, you know, I give a hook the arm. Some feel it. Gotta feel it. Gotta feel it, right? So listen, I commend what you are saying and doing for us today. And the World Church of Seven Day Adventist is a better church because what you're sharing. That caffeine ain't no joke. But guess what? Most people that drink coffee, they put a little cream and sugar. 
So I don't do the coffee. I did the cream and the sugar. So listen, you're still speaking to me. Amen. Amen. Did I get the message? Did I get it? What a blessing. What a blessing. Yes, and right. yes I'm indeed. Gonna let, I'm going to let you pray us out because guess what? God has put that anointing on you to let you know, to let us know that we need not to put in stuff to be dependent, but let God pour into us that we may be dependent on him for our health and wellness. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Sister Ruth, did she, Elder Ruth, did she want to say something? I saw that. Oh, okay. You go right ahead. All right. Sweet Jesus. You are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. And we love you so much. And that's why we're here. You loved us and you spoke. The earth came into existence and throughout ages of eternity, when you speak, individuals were here. The sun, the moon, and the stars into existence. So we lean on you 100%. And we're thankful for those who came on the prayer line. You saw, Lord, those who are sending the prayers up, those sending the praises up. And those who have, who are asking for prayer, rather in their home, their community, wherever their children are, bless them, not just our children, but those in war-torn countries or even here in our own United States. Oh, wrap your arms around those who are in Texas and other places who lost their children. God, this thing is so painful. It's so painful. But you, let us humbly just bring our burdens to you and leave them there because we have a tendency to give them to you and take it back, give it to you and take it back. So I'm begging you, Father, give us the tenacity to let things go and to go tell others, I've seen a man. His name is Jesus. In the name of Jesus forever and ever. Amen. 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 We want to welcome you to Bible Discovery Center presents at the 61st General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists in St. Louis, Missouri. Listen, it's my birthplace, but I was born again in New Rochelle, New York. Amen. And when I say born again, listen, I accept Jesus in St. Louis, right? I learned about him. But when you're born again and you're converted into loving the Lord and walking, allow him to live out his commandments in you, it's a whole nother level, everybody. So listen, God loves you all. Thank you if you just took a second to tune in to Bible Discovery Center via our virtual booth at uh, a GC conference. Listen, check it out. Listen, if you check it out and you see that it doesn't check out right, you got to tell us because we want to be better. We want to be excellent. So we we did our best and God, we asking God to, to bless it that others could, could look past our faults and see our need to witness to our general conference of seven-day Adventists and to our world church and to the world. Listen, right now we're going to go into um, our Daughters of Faith out of St. Louis, Missouri, the Eastern Area Federation Women's Ministry of Seven-day Adventists through Central States Conference. One of the host conferences of the general conference, right? But listen, I want to give a shout out to our Missouri, right here in this this region, uh, the Illinois conference and the Lake Region conference. It's four conferences. I mean, when I tell you we're all right here, I can leave my house and within 25 minutes get to any one of the churches in those conferences. That's how we are so connected. And we have what you call the AMPs. That's where all our pastors, believe it or not, get together once a month and, and, and talk about the city and what's going on. And then like every quarter, they put bring us together as a, a congregation. And then with Central States Conference, we have five churches in St. Louis. And it's called the slam. We slam the devil. We do. We come together and we pray and we do ministry together. So listen, it is powerful. You want, if we want to be better, we're better together when we pray. 
What did I say? I said we're better together when we pray. And we're getting ready to do that. So let me tell you a little about our Daughters of Faith prayer line. Our Daughters of Faith prayer line is where no one has to be alone, pray alone, study alone. And we added this, and, and it came out of the suffering of losing my sister on May 10th. Listen, suffer alone. No one, no one, no one. So listen, we give our numbers out to any and everybody that wants it. Why? Because we realize that we are one in the spirit, one in the spirit. So at this time, we have some people from um, um, our Daughters of Faith on the line. And, and, and I just want to know, is Sister Catherine, are you able to sing the Lord's Prayer at this time? If so, unmute um, yourself. And, 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 and let me know. If not, you could just say it if you would like. Uh, let me know. Unmute yourself when I see you unmute. All right. I don't see her unmute, so let us pray. <clears throat> Maybe she'll sing it at the end. Let us pray. Abba, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I invited some people from our Doors of Faith. We usually meet at uh, 7.15, Monday through Friday in the a.m. and 9.15 um, p.m., um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, under the leadership uh, and the host of uh, Bonita. Um, so listen, our um, call to our call to uh, worship text is, and someone can put it in the chat, Lamentations. Lamentation, if you can look that up, Lamentations chapter three and verse 21. We read this every day. Why? Because it's an everyday reading. When I read it to those who haven't heard it, you're going to see why. It says this, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, said my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, for the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man shall both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. That's something that we want to wake up to. Amen. Amen. And listen, we have a we have a worship song. We have a worship song. We've been sharing it with you uh, for the last couple of days. And it is great is that faithfulness. And we on standard stand stanza number three. And how fitting it goes with what, what Mother Barbara just shared with us. And this is what it says. Party from sin and a peace that endureth thy own dear presence to cheer and to God. Strength for today and hope for tomorrow. And bright hope for tomorrow. Blessing all mine with 10,000 beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let me tell you guys how faithful he is. Right now, God is speaking. It's lightning outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. Y'all understand that, right? But listen, he is so faithful that everybody's saying, Sister K, slow down. Get some sleep. Do this. But last I heard, he puts me to sleep and he wakes me up. If y'all want me to get some sleep, please say, Lord, let us sleep in a little longer because my eyes pop up. I say, what time is it this morning? It was two o'clock. I say, Lord, I got another hour. He said, get up. I'm like, what am I getting up for? And the reason he asked me to get up, he said, send a text, send an email to everybody and just let them know what's going on at General Conference. You know, we're laymen, but guess what? We got a labor. If you're a layman and you ain't layman, you, mm, I, mm, I'm not going to say that. Amen. But listen, I'm super excited. Now it is your time. 
you are experiencing Abba Doors of Faith Prayer Line, all right? So for the next uh, seven minutes, right? We No, 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 I'm saying next five minutes, right? Because we could get excited, right? We open the line and the line is open for you to say your prayer of praise, your prayer of thanksgiving, and your prayer of intercession. It goes like this. And we want to do what you call a 30-second uh, prayer. Why? Because in 30 seconds, you can say the Lord's prayer. And that's that's a long, it seems like a long prayer when people are saying it, right? Like, oh, they're ever going to finish. But listen, we just want you to take 30 seconds and say, listen, listen, I am my my prayer. Pray, and you're praying. You're praying it. You're not saying it. You're praying it. You're saying Father, I want to thank you for Sister Barbara's talk today on caffeine. And that will help me to continue to overcome taking a tidbit when I go to Olive Garden. In Jesus' name, amen. What's, amen. Your, what's your prayer? Go ahead. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for the message that we heard this morning. I want to... Um, Thank you that um, that there that there is um, there is hope for us. We can turn to you and ask for help from you, and uh, have a desire to do better in, uh, with our earthen vessels instead of continuing to break them down. Um, that we can be a blessing to you and be able to do the work that you have given us to do. Please remember. Uh, my prayer request for uh, uh, all of those on my prayer list and then the new ones in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We'll be next. Let's keep it going. Pop in there. You all come on. Father. I ask and I plead with you for all the years as a child growing up, I was very much, um, very much into health and going to bed on time or before nine o'clock was what I did over the many years and walking. I did, I still do a number of things, but I am now going to bed at two, three and four in the morning and I am not pleased. So I'm asking you, father, help me to go back to my old ways and get in the bed and stop eating in between meals. Father, please. That's a major problem. I eat. On the hour, every hour, that's not, not so. I beg of you, please take that desire. Oh, sit, drink some water, or do something else, go for a walk. But Lord, I cannot do this by myself, so I beg of you, help me to stop eating all day long, and help me to go to bed um, at a decent hour in the name of Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Abba Father, we want to lift up the 61st General Conference of Seven Day Adventist, Lord God. Father, uh, a change that happened, I sure, yesterday is that the record center uh, for the blind is, is being transferred from the General Conference uh, Seven Day Adventist under their umbrella to the North America Division. Father, I pray that our brothers and sisters worldwide would not feel that they're being left out, but it is still an international because we are an international people. So Father, bless the changes that, that uh, you're going to allow during this 21st. And Father, let it not divide, Father, but let it help us to have a conversation and then stand on our conscience in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Anyone else? Father, I want to lift up our single families, Lord God, uh, Father, household. If it's just a, 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 a person with a pet, single family, a father with children, a mother with children, lift them up, Lord God. I want to lift up the blended families in our world, Lord God. It, it, it is hard. But yes. one thing we know for sure that once we in Christ is no longer blended. Hallelujah, God. So God, let us understand the love that you have for people in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone else would like to pray? 
You have to unmute yourself. You may be praying on mute. Yes, yes, yes. Lord God, we want you to bless the Bible Discovery Center, Lord God. We don't know where we're going because we don't know the plans you have for us. But what we do, we want to plan to hear your voice. Help us at Bible Discovery Center, Lord God, as we move forward, Lord, to empower Bible instructors to become coaches. They talked about that yesterday uh, with uh, when they put a bylaw in last night for the elders to not only be in the pulpit on Sabbath in so many words, but also now, Lord, that they will go and, and, and nurture the people, door to, uh, family to family, and, and they would sure love. And, and one brother said, well, wait a minute. We got 3,000 members, I mean, 300 members in our congregation and, and like five elders. Can we increase that? But then the man came back with this. He said, listen, listen, keep listening, because listen, then we're going to show you all how we can get the members totally involvement. But guess what? They too late. Friendship evangelism been around since 2009. If they would just go to their, their the uh, layman's uh, church manual, uh, manual for personal ministry, that's where I got most of my things from, for friendship evangelism, then they will have the answer. Father, we're getting away from reading and, 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 and communing with you and just listening to people. It's okay, because he said testify. But Father, we got to pick up the books. We got to pick up the Bible. We got to share it. We got to know it. We got to live it. And then guess what? People won't suffer in our church. They won't. Because we will see a need and do a godly deed in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone else want to pray before we go into our reading? Yes, I'd like to lift up our youth. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bow before you, rededicating our commitment to our youth, to you, Lord. You, they are your creation. You made us, you made them, and they are a replica of us. So the ugliness that we see and that we are so readily to identify in our children are part and parcel of us. So we ask, Lord, that you uh, open our eyes to see them as you see them and that we take the time and not be so focused on uh, non-salvation agenda items, but to focus on our children and having them to recognize who you are and to serve you, Father. And we ask, Lord, that you help us to be better role models because they model what they see. But the world has such influence on them that we must be constantly lifting them up on the altar. So we lift them up today and ask that you anoint them Touch our hands as we touch them and bless them every day. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. And I want to touch with that, Lord God. Be with Pastor Roger, our youth director of Seven Day Adventist. We are going to have a youth congress here in St. Louis in July. So look for more information about that uh, as we go forward. A youth congress right here in St. Louis. So listen, listen, we are in the heart of America, but guess what? We are the heart of the world in Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I wanna pray for Sister Benita, Coach Benita. Uh, she, is a, um, she is a coach for Bible Discovery Center. She is a, a host of the Prayer Warriors out of, 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 of Omaha, Nebraska, her, and she the love, and, and, and then, then she is a co-host or a host of Our Daughters of Faith. People say the youth need somewhere to go. Well, listen, at 9.15 p.m., we have Our Daughters of Faith prayer line. And it's for the young people because like my sister Barbara said, us that are mature, we need to go to bed by 9 o'clock. Amen. So at 9.15, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Sister Benita hosted a uh, Bible, uh, Abba Daughters of Faith prayer line. Sister Benita, you want to come on? Lord bless her as she reads. Amen. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. So our, our reading this morning, oh, good, after, good morning, good afternoon, and Amen. good evening, wherever you are coming from. Amen. So our book reading is um, 
chapter 13, our, yes, our book reading is uh, Ellen G. White's A Prayer Book. That's the title, Prayer Book. Um, chapter 13 and page 150, Men and Women of Prayer. Nehemiah prayed, certain that God would fulfill his promises by faith, taking fast hold of the, of the divine promise. Nehemiah laid down at the footstool of heavenly mercy his petition that God would maintain the cause of his penitent people. Restore their strength and build up their waste places. God had been faithful to his, to his threatenings when his people separated from him. He had scattered them abroad among the nations, according to his word. And Nehemiah found in this very fact and assurance that he himself would be equally faithful in fulfilling his promises to God. So now the call is open for what you took away from that reading, um, what your prayer would be concerning that reading. Also, if you want me to go back and read it again, just let me know. Please read it again, please. Okay. Nehemiah prayed. He was certain that God would fulfill his promises. That God would fulfill God's promises. So by faith, taking fast hold, taking fast hold of the divine promise, Nehemiah laid down at the footstool of heavenly mercy his petition that God would maintain the cause of his penitent people, restore their strength, and build up their waste places. God had been faithful to his threatenings when his people separated from him. He had scattered them abroad among the nations according to his word. And Nehemiah found in this very fact, an assurance that he himself would be equally faithful in fulfilling his promises to God. And that concludes the reading. So what's your takeaway? Well, this is Coach K. For the sake of time, we will not uh, do our takeaway. So usually when we okay. are on our daughters of faith, we will uh, give our tidbit thought about what we take away. But um, uh, Brother um, Richard Gordon, uh, welcome to the line. I was trying to chat you and just ask, would you pray over us as if you were Nehemiah saying, Lord, we know you want to destroy everybody. You want to, you don't want to destroy everybody. You want everybody ready to uh, when you come. But because of our sinfulness, right? Um, you have to do his, he has to do his strength I act. Would you pray over us, Brother uh, Elder Richards, just to close us out for this segment as we go into our next part? Would you do that for us, Elder? Elder Richard, can you hear me? If you can hear me, you can unmute yourself and pray. Okay, well, listen, it's okay. Let us pray. Oh, Father, I just want to thank you. I, 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 I thank you, God. I, I, I can concur with um, Brother uh, Prophet Nehemiah in pleading with you, Lord God, hold back the winds of strife, of killing or, or of the killing, Lord God, of uh, hold back the winds of strife, of people taking our family lives, hold back the wind of strife, of cancer taking us out. Hold back the winds of strife, Lord God, until the world, the church of seven-day Adventists, 
the world itself will come to know you and have a meaningful relationship with you, Lord God. It may be on the deathbed. It may be holding that steering wheel before that head-on collision. It just may be any time in our lives that God, that that strange act of the wages of sin is death will come upon us. Hold it back just a little while longer. And God, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would give us that those that needed more time to get it right with you and tend to take your love to the world is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you on behalf of our dogs of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. I turn it off. Mother Sharon. Thank you so much for that powerful hour of showing us what you do on Abba Daughters of Faith and your prayer line. I've been a part of that prayer line and it is a powerful prayer line. Uh, people are more vocal and I think we have some people who are just not quite used to that format and that's okay uh, because prayer lines are different as we move across. But we want to just praise God and know that our personalities fit into our prayer lines. God has a work for all of us and we'll just do what he says. But we are so blessed to have with us um, for our next session, um, our speaker will be, it's U-Turn for Better Health, and it's our nutritionist. It is Beverly George Johnson. Uh, Beverly George Johnson is a beautiful woman. I'm going to just uh, ask you to, to just pray. To, let's just bow and pray out the session that we just had, and we will pray into the session that we're going into now. Loving Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We ask the outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon us on this next session. God, you have been so good to us yesterday and today by bringing our speakers on timely, by not having any technical or minor technical difficulties. Lord, you've opened the waves and you've opened the doors for us to reach out to others and to bless them in your name. So we praise you and we thank you. You woke us up this morning, Lord, and we've rededicated and recommitted all over again. We ask that you be with us as we learn more about taking care of our bodies through our nutritionist, Sister Beverly. So be with us, Father. Bless us is my prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. I just want to say that uh, we are part of the 61st session of the General Conference of Seven-Day Adventists. We are so glad to be live streaming, and we welcome those of you who are meeting with us on social media and ask God's blessings on your home. Uh, Bible Discovery Center is located in Belleville, Illinois. It is founded by Angela K. Powell and Garrett Christie. So you have Illinois and Baltimore coming together to form a dynamic ministry. The ministry engages people in Bible study and special events such as teachings about the last days. It encourages them in health and nutrition. And of course, we always lifting up our people in prayer, um, not just our people, but all of God's people, all the people all over asking God to do a mighty thing, to do a mighty work through us, to create a miracle so that we can bring more people to him. So with that, I ask that you contact a friend, invite them to the session. Uh, if they don't make this session, we are open every day that the conference is not in session for a meeting. So just come on back to this website and be uh, encouraged and learn something because we've got some dynamic speakers coming up. Would like to introduce our speaker this morning. It is Beverly George Johnson. Um, she has a desire to help people achieve lasting health. And it was inspired by her mother who has been a neuro neuropathic practitioner for many years. Though she spent several years in the corporate world as a project management professional, Beverly George Johnson never lost sight of her passion to help others enjoy radiant health. Beverly began the journey with Cornell University's plant-based nutrition program. She later completed training at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition to become an integrative nutrition health coach. While completing training at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, Beverly remained engaged doing presentations at local and online venues and later hosting the Journey to Health and Wellness as well as Your Health and You radio programs on WWFN. 
In mid-2020, Beverly launched Restore Life Wellness Company and RestoreLifeWellness.com, offering practical health information, natural products that are effectively meet the need health crisis of this time, as well as herbal supplements for many other health conditions. I submit to you a beautiful woman. Uh, she is a radiant, uh, healthy woman who looks her part. She looks what she talks. And I'd like to present her to you at this time. And that's nutritionist Beverly George Johnson. Good morning, good morning. How is everyone doing this morning? Um, thank you, thank you for that introduction. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna jump right into our presentation for today. Um, Sister Kay, Coach Kay, can you share with me? I believe I did it, check it and make sure. Ah, yes. Okay. So we're gonna talk this morning about immunity, our immune system. And boy, have we heard a lot about immunity in the last couple of years, natural immunity. So today we're gonna to talk about the natural immunity, you know, God's way of natural immunity. Um, not the herd immunity, not the, you know, the, the vaccine immunity, but God's natural immunity. So a little bit of, about our immune system, uh, some of you may, some of you may not know um, how powerful God has created our immune system. Uh, it is compared to a, a military. Think about the most powerful military, you know, maybe the, the, the Chinese military or the American military, how powerful they are, the arsenal um, that is behind the military. Well, God created our bodies pretty much just like that with, with cells that attack and overpower these invaders. So, you know, when, when, when this country, the CDC started talking about, you know, you needed to take a vaccine in order to, to have an immune system to fight, you know, the, the pandemic, I started doing some research and, you know, it, it was just amazing to me, you know, looking at some of the videos that talked about, you know, our immune system and how, you know, how it attacks and, and pretty much arrests and eliminate <laughs> invaders out of our bodies. Um, so things like bacteria and disease and viruses uh, that come into our system, how do we, how do we deal with them? How do we, how do we get rid of them out of our system. Sometimes, you know, you, you know, things come in and yeah, you, you get a cold, you get a, you get a flu. Sometimes you can't fight it fast enough. Um, and our bodies will go through the process and eventually we'll, we'll get over that hump and we'll recover. Um, but then there's some people who have like autoimmune diseases where, you know, that immune system is attacking itself. And there's, there's things to, to treat that as well, because God gave us the leaves of the tree for the healing of the nation. And, and you know, in the circles that I, that I run with, you know, we talk about these incurable diseases that we can cure by God's grace. Amen. Um, powerful protector when you get fever, when you get inflammation in the body, which, you know, lately we've been having a, a, just a lot of people with this inflammatory conditions um, that's really debilitating. A lot of painful situations lately that I've been um, encountering with people. Uh, their bodies just is not able to to fight as a, as well as as some others. You know, of course, you know, older people or people that might have uh, comorbidities may not be able to to fight off as readily as a young person or a person who is healthy or even you know somebody who is you know eating a certain way or taking certain supplements, because sometimes, you know, eating, um, eating healthy foods, you are still subject because we live in an environment that, you know, we are bombarded with all these chemicals and, and things in the air. So we're not able to fight off, you know, some of these invaders as, as readily as we should. Um, the immune system is like a, the body's surveillance, right? 
So it, it goes up and down and to and fro and something comes, comes into the system and immediately the signals are sent to, you know, to the brain and the brain sends this, the signals to, to, the, to the white blood cells telling, telling your body exactly what they need to do with this, with this thing that just came in. Um, but of course, you know, I always come back to the, to the food subject where if you eat a certain way, you are better equipped in your body. If you eat more naturally plant-based foods, you are better equipping your system to be able to fight and you won't get sick as, you know, as often. Uh, a lot of people, everything that comes around, you find that you get sick. You are, um, you are in bed, you're down. It takes you weeks to get over um, a cold or something like that. Or you might get a cough that just is just lasting a very long time. Um, but times, times have changed. Our food supply has changed. Um, we've been abused pretty much from, from all fronts, from, from the air, from the water, from the food. Um, we get full, we eat, we get full, our stomachs get full, but how, how long do we stay full and what do we get from the foods that we eat? So what do we need to eat to boost our immune system? What do we need to consume in terms of like um, uh, supplements to, to boost our immune system, to be able to really be strong enough and, you know, we just went through a pandemic. We're still in the pandemic, but, you know, some people say we're at the tail end of it. Um, what do we need to do to build up for the next assault that's coming? Because we know that it's coming, right? Um, so we need to be prepared for that. Um, here's something that, that was very alarming to me when I first read it. It says 90 to 95% of illnesses are caused by low-grade inflammation. Like who would have thought, right? Um, it is dependent on the microbial population in your gut. And yesterday I mentioned, um, when we were talking about the gut, I mentioned that, you know, 75% to 80% of your immunity is in your gut. Um, so if you're not digesting food properly, if you're not assimilating that nutrition that you might've gotten from the food and, um, you have these stomach illnesses, then chances are your immune system is compromised, right? Um, the inflammatory load that can cause autoimmune disease, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, cancer, which we find we're finding just a host of people just being um, being diagnosed with cancer, and you know, young people. It's it's just very um, it's very discouraging when you see a lot of people who are vegetarians coming down with, um, with various kinds of cancers. But chances are, again, it's not, it's not only the food that you eat, but how well you're able to get the nutrition from the food that you eat. Um, what is breaking us down? We eat a lot of sugar in this country. Uh, our immune cells are unable to march around the body fighting invaders those with a sweet tooth <laughs> know that uh, sugar can be very addicting. Um, I know people who they will sit and eat a tub of ice cream. Um, and so you are causing a lot of bacteria and, and, and uh, microbes in your blood that can cause you um, to not be able to fight when something comes around. Or if there is a cancer cell that forms in your body, what do you fight it with? Um, we have a lot of a prevalence of anti uh, uh, overuse of antibiotics in this country. You get a cold, you go to the doctor, you get a prescription for antibiotic. But after, after some time, um, the antibiotics break us down. If you realize you, you, some people take antibiotics and they get an infection after they take an antibiotic. So it's, it's, um, it's like a two-edged sword, right? Uh, how do you protect your immune system? So I'm gonna give you like a, a bunch of things coming up in terms of uh, vitamins, minerals, herbs that will help you to build up your immune system. Um, you don't have to get everything, but I would suggest that you do because our bodies again are under assault. Um, 
So the, the best thing to do is build up, build up as much as you can so that um, when trouble comes and we know it's coming and chances are you may not be able to get certain things, at least your body is at that place, right? Um, so we know about vitamin C, but vitamin C is like a macro nutrition. Vitamin C, if you pop a pill, like 500 milligrams of vitamin C a day, it does a little good. Um, but vitamin C in, in large doses is just, you know, you cannot explain how beneficial vitamin C is. Um, I heard a story of a, a person who got COVID, went to the hospital. Um, they wanted to, to put him on a ventilator. His wife, she was an advocate for him. And she asked that um, he be treated with intravenous vitamin C. He was really really bad at the point of, you know, not being able to breathe at all. And, um, and it took some time, some fighting, but they were able to, to give him intravenous vitamin C. And three days later, he walked out the hospital just with vitamin C. Um, people with, with cancer, uh, high dosage of vitamin C. When I say high dosages, not a thousand milligrams a day, more like 50,000 milligrams a day, which seems like a lot, but most of the time for, for the average person, uh, like for me, let's just say, I, I'm getting sick, I'm getting the cold. I will take um, 3000 milligrams of vitamin C two to three times a day. Now, every person is different. Some people has a tolerance level of like 2000 a day. So the way to, to determine your tolerance level is if you have um, a little bit more of a loose stool, to, uh, if you go to the bathroom and you feel like, you know, you're, you're kind of a little bit diarrhea, diarrhea um, chances are you kind of reach your threshold of vitamin C. So, you know, test it out, but you will see the difference. You'll feel the difference. Um, so I would do that if I'm getting, and, and literally within 48 hours, you know, that, that coal is, is gone because I, I know the dosage that I need to take. Um, so that's why I'm sharing this stuff with you so that um, you are able to, to better, you know, treat yourself from home, right? Um, we know about the sun. We know about the sun, but many of us don't get enough. We know about the benefits of being in the sun, but we don't get enough. So that's where the vitamin D3 uh, comes in. And that was also a very powerful mineral that, um, that folks use when, uh, when the virus was going around. It was D3. Some people just took D3 alone and was able to, to kind of recover more quickly than, than, than others. Um, NAC, now this is a very, very powerful mineral. And you might've heard about NAC uh, in different places because they were trying to take it off the market in the height of the pandemic. A lot of people were looking for this because it's very powerful. It helps us um, with our lungs, with inflammation in our lungs. And, they were trying to take it off the market. I think some of the stores I went into, they, they had already taken it off the market, but I, I saw it came back. So I was like, praise the Lord, I need to stuck up. Um, but this is, this is a, a, a mineral that you should get and try to, to keep it in your, in your cabinet. This should be part of your arsenal. Anybody that you know that might still be having issues from you know, having a really bad bout of, of the virus, um, this will also help in in therapeutic doses, which is, you know, a little bit more than what's in the bottle, which, you know, if you want to, if you want to talk to me some more about, you know, a therapeutic dose, you know, feel free to give me a call, um, go on restorelifewellness.com. You'll find my, my, my number there. You can give me a call and we can talk about a therapeutic dose of anything that you're taking. Um, vitamin B. A vitamin B, a lot of people don't take. Well, we know that if you're a vegetarian, you should probably, you know, take a supplement of vitamin B12. But vitamin B, if you know anyone that has a lot of issues with their nerves, um, you know, nerve ending pain, you know, whole body pain, chances are they're probably low in vitamin Bs. So, you know, a B complex is a good, um, it's a good supplement that you should add to your, your, your natural arsenal of, um, of medications that you would want to keep on hand, especially for, you know, what's coming down in the future, 
stores might be closed. We might not have access to a lot of things. Uh, so vitamin B complex, I would suggest, um, would be one of the good things to add to, to your, your cabinet. Zinc. Now zinc is another one, uh, kind of like the MEC, that is a must have if you have, um, if you have lung issues, if you have long COVID, like they, like some people are saying that there's such a thing um, where you just have these, these ongoing issues. Zinc is um, sometimes, you know, people say it's just, you know, for men, men need to take zinc, but we all need to take zinc because it helps our immune system. So in addition to the vitamin C that I take, um, I also would take zinc. Um, some people have a allergic reaction to taking them together, uh, vitamin C and zinc together. So you definitely have to eat something <laughs> before you take zinc. Sometimes you can have that, that reaction because, um, because it needs a little bit of um, food in your stomach to, to be able to assimilate better. Uh, or you, you don't have to take them together. You can take them, you know, take the zinc, then take the vitamin C or vice versa. I also wanted to mention a couple of the minerals that it, it really, if you have these ongoing issues, you're not quite sure, you know, what it is that's going on in your body. Chances are you are low in, in minerals. We take vitamins, but many of us neglect to take minerals. Um, glutathione is a, is a mineral that you need to add to, to your list. Uh, alpha lipoic acid is also a mineral that you need to add to your list. You don't hear about these often, but these two are very, very powerful. The alpha lipoic acid can help rebuild a damaged liver. Um, it's, a, it's a mineral that will help you to stay healthy. Uh, Serapeptase and the natokinase, if you know anybody that might be having like clogged artery problems, um, these are two minerals that help to, and what I'm giving you here is a little bit more than just to build the immune system. This is to prepare you for what might be coming that you might not, you know, you might not have access to a lot of things. So you want to build up your, your, your cabinet with some, some things that you might need, right? Um, but these two things uh, help, help with, with artery issues. It is, these are very powerful prolytic, I think I'm saying it right, <laughs> enzymes. Um, I've used them personally for like, uh, I had a fibroid, and um, I took these two, these two minerals combined together, you know, they, they help to, to remove the fibrin in certain areas of the body that might, might have a buildup of say scar tissue, things like that. Um, so those, those might be things that you want to add. Um, probiotics. So yesterday I mentioned the probiotics, um, but these are important for your immune system because again, the gut and because of the immunity that it is in your gut. So the probiotics regulate the pH balance in your system, um, help with the whatever bug that comes into your, to your body, help you to move your bowels, um, help with the brain connectivity. And again, enzymes are important. We, a lot of times just take vitamins. We don't take minerals, we don't take enzymes, but it's a combination of all these things that help to keep us in good health. And that's what I try to, to do. I try to help you know, balance all those things out. Um, okay, my time is running. Uh, onions, we know about onions, but I'm gonna tell you a story about, the very, very, very powerful story about onions and this onion soup. Um, my mother had a, a neighbor who she developed, um, um, oh, the name just slipped my mind. It's like, this is what everybody's been talking about where you, you, your lungs fill up with fluid and you have mucus in the lungs. It's just escaping my mind. But anyway, she was in the hospital um, and she, the family was called because they couldn't, they could not get her over that hump where she was recovering and she was getting worse. My mother made onion soup, took it to the hospital. And I'm still trying to remember the name um, at the tip of my tongue. And, um, and within a day or two, she was able to be released from the hospital. Um, and so onion is very powerful for the lungs. It can clear up you know, any, any issue, any lung issues, strengthen the lungs. Um, if you have breathing issues, onion soup, try it. It's very, very good. I've tried it. Ginger. Now we know about ginger. 
the antiviral and the, the anti-parasitic compound in ginger is very powerful for your immune system. If you're having stomach issues, again, to regulate that gut, um, ginger is very powerful. Uh, turmeric, anti-inflammatory, helps to, to boost your immune system in, you know, in numerous ways. Uh, there's there's a, diff, a couple of different ways that you can consume turmeric, of course, and food. You can make the, 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 what they call the golden milk, where you can make it as a tea. You can research that. It's very, it's tasty, actually. It doesn't taste like sour, bitter, like sometimes turmeric can give you that bitterish taste. But, you know, if you use the right amount, you can, you can make a really nice tea from it. It's called a golden milk. Um, golden seal root, we know it's a natural antibiotic. Um, so you don't need to go get a prescription if you can get yourself some anti, uh, some golden seal. These are things that you want to keep in your arsenal. You want to keep it in your in your little um, your natural medicine chest, right? Um, golden seal, garlic. We we know a lot about garlic already. We cook with garlic. Many of us cook with garlic, but garlic is is a must have. You want to keep it and be careful of where you get it from. Like I always check to make sure that it's not coming from China. I'm sorry, I just don't know how they uh, how they grow their garlic. So I try to find garlic that is grown in other parts of the world. Not to say that I know anything about that either, but um, I kind of trust it a little bit more. This is a little bit more about garlic, how it thins the blood, um, help to lower the blood pressure, fight infections and things like that. Oil of oregano. You might have heard about oil of oregano and how how good it is to help you overcome um, a cold or flu. A lot of people was uh, was using oil of oregano uh, during the height of pandemic when you know people were getting sick left and right. Um, it is really a powerful oil. You have to be careful because <laughs> that thing will burn you. Um, elderflower, elderberry. We know about elderberry. You can get elderberry just about anywhere now elderberry syrup, just about anywhere. In um, in Tennessee, you know, elderberries grow wild. You can pick them and dry them, and which I have like a whole bag full of elderberries um, that I dried myself and make my own syrup. And it's a good thing to keep in your, in your refrigerator. You start feeling something, you just take a couple uh, spoonfuls of the syrup. Uh, astragalus, this is a, a very powerful herb to help you to get strong, to overcome if you've had surgery. This builds up your immune system really quickly. Okay, I have like two minutes. Um, this is astragalus. You probably want to jot that one down. Um, ashwagandha, this is another very powerful herb. This is, uh, this is Arabic. It's in Indian um, origins. And um, this helps to boost your immune system pretty much like, um, like astragalus does. Uh, so this is a recipe, natural flu shot. This is a recipe that, um, that I, I keep on hand. <laughs> um, if, you, if you have family members that you know, get sick frequently or you know, just winter's coming around, um, you might have seen like different versions of this. This is, this is a quick and easy version of making um, the natural flu shot. And you know, it, honey and lemon and cayenne pepper, um, garlic and ginger, it's very easy to make. So in closing, the best way to build immunity is to maintain a balanced lifestyle. And I think by now we pretty much know what a balanced lifestyle is. Uh, obtaining enough sunlight, and rest, and exercise, and drinking lots of water. And I'm going to say that again, drinking lots of water. Many things can go wrong in your body if you don't have enough water. Um, our body temple should be fed well, nourished, and given the right environment to heal and to thrive. The thriving is the part that a lot of people have problems with, right? Uh, in the beginning, at creation, God provided us with a natural diet. It is still the best diet for us. If you need to reach out to me, my information is below. Um, RestoreLifeWellness.com. You know, you can visit the page. RestoreLifeWellness at gmail.com. Uh, you can reach me that way. Or yes, you'll, you'll find my number on the dot com. You can call me. You can send me an email. And I will, I will be in touch with you. Hope you were blessed.
by this message today. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. God bless. Amen. Amen. We were absolutely blessed by this message. Uh, there's so much to learn and uh, we probably need to just uh, readjust and re go to an educational class with you every day so that we can make these changes that we need to make so that our temples will be strong. God wants us to uh, appreciate what he, how he has made us and what he has made us to be. And we've lost track of that with some bad choices. So we thank you for bringing us back around. And fortunately for everyone who's listening in today, there are three ways that you can reach her. You can reach her through Bible Discovery Center because she is a component uh, uh, that the health message for Bible Discovery Center and her own uh, business, her own organization, directly restorelifewellness.com and restorelifewellness at gmail.com. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate what you've shared with us. Coach K, do you have anything to add before we move into our next session? Lord help me, Lord help me. <laughs> Girl, thank you, I tell you. He said he reproved, so I don't know if y'all been reproved, but between sister, the BBs, the BBs, Beverly, uh, Barbara and Beverly, we we went bombarded with good stuff, amen. <laughs> amen, amen. All right. We thank you all so much for joining us. And if you have to leave us, we hope that you will come back. We are on every time the GC session shuts down and they have, they're not having a meeting. You can come to Bible Discovery Center. You can come to the link that you're on right now. We will be here. We have some amazing speakers coming up and we just want to pray this session out and our next session. in. Coach K, would you pray us out and in, please? Yes, Father God, we just thank you, God, that you sent Barbara and Beverly our way, Lord God. And, and, and Coach Beverly, Lord, we just thank you for what she put before us today. And Lord, we, we, I, 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 I want to be a Nehemiah right now and ask you to forgive us for making poor health choices, Lord God. Forgive our parents who set the pace. But Father, forgive us and give us wisdom when we go reach for something that will hinder us being mobile, hinder us from being healthy. Father, Father, we right now, I don't know how many people want to raise their hand or just say, I touch and agree. God, we have come short in our health department. Forgive us in the name of Jesus. And for those who are listening live, forgive them too. And Father, let the, the gospel of the right hand of the gospel come forth in general session of, of uh, 61 in St. Louis, Missouri, Lord God, because a healthy family make healthy disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Coach K. And on behalf of Bible Discovery Ministries, we just want to um, invite you to the next session that we have. Uh, we, we just have a boatload of awesome speakers here on Bible Discovery Center. We have people that it's whatever it is that we need, we have people who can provide that information for you. So let us know because we're constantly evolving the website. We have uh, Bible studies. We have special events going on. We have prayer and we have help with Bible Discovery Center. The founders uh, Angela K. Powell, we affectionately call her Coach K, and Garrett Christie, who have Illinois and Baltimore who've come together to make this dynamic program. And we're so excited to be a part of the 61st General Conference of Seven Day Adventists. We are streaming live. You can catch us on Facebook and YouTube. We are just so excited about this opportunity to be alive and to be in the service of the Lord. And I'd like to, uh, my name is Sharon Petaway, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, I want to introduce our next speaker. Uh, but before I introduce our speaker, we want to have an opening prayer to bring her in. So I'm going to ask uh, El, uh, Chaplain Barbara if she will give us a short prayer to uh, pray over our speaker, who, who is Sister Kazarine Smith. We can't hear you, Chaplain. We. Thank you so very, very much for a willing vessel. Catherine Smith, Father, 
wrap your loving arms around her, continue to send the Holy Spirit to work through her and let us grow. And then the information that we get, let us not keep it to ourselves, but be willing to go and tell somebody in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 It is indeed, indeed a pleasure for me to introduce the next speaker. It is Sister Kazreen Smith. She was born in Jamaica. She moved to uh, Maryland, America and Maryland about the age of 10 years old. The only church that she has ever attended was the Liberty Seventh-day Adventist Church. And she's been with us for over 30 years. She is my sister in Christ. She wanted to be a disciple of Jesus and follow the Lord. And she does an amazing job at it in whatever she does. She does it with all of her strength. She is a sweetheart of a young lady. And she truly believes that the Lord has a sense of humor and she's learning to appreciate his sense of humor. But that is for another time. She wants to be obedient and follow God wherever he leads. Now, some offices that she has held and I have watched her grow over the years. She was a pathfinder and then a pathfinder coach and deputy. And she also now leads out in singles ministries. Uh, she also uh, is new to our audiovisual team, and she has learned our system, which has changed and updated. She has learned that system, and she is teaching others on the team. And I have to say that she's teaching me, uh, and I appreciate her and all that she does. Her favorite scripture is Philippians 4.13, and we are just so glad to have her with us today. Sister Cosreen, please bless us with your message. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm so, I'm so happy to be here. I want to thank Sister um, Sharon Petaway for this opportunity um, to be able to speak to you. So in coming up with a message, I couldn't decide. I knew that I want to do a lot of priors. So if you're here, you're going to be a willing participant of my program. So I want this to be interactive. So as much as possible. So the first one I was listening on Tuesday and I realized that you guys wanted to do the names of God. So I'm not going to cover every single name of God. I'm going to cover just about five of them. And then after each one, we're going to say prior. Mm -hmm. Some topic I have specifically picked out and some topics is very open. So please be with me. I am full of nerves and I pray that the Lord will be with me. So the first one I want to start with is the, um, Jehovah Raha. The Lord is my shepherd. And Jehovah is translated as the, ex as the existing one or the Lord. The chief meaning of Jehovah is derived from the Hebrew word meaning to be or to be exist. It also such as to becoming, to become as specifically to know a God who know himself unceasingly. And Raha means shepherd. In the Hebrew, shepherd is one who feeds or lead his flock to the pasture in Ezekiel 34, 11 through 15. An extended translation of the word is friend or companion. This indicates the, um, the Lord, the intimacy that God desired between himself and his people. When the two words are combined, Jehovah Raha can be translated as the Lord is my friend. And the reason why I wanted to start with that scripture is because um, Psalms 23, in this day and age, the world has changed so much. All the places that you could have gone before that we were considered safe, they're no longer safe. You could go to the store. It's possible that you, you may not come home. You could go to work. It's a possibility that you may not even come home from that either. You could go to church. And it's a possibility that you may not go come home also. There's a possibility that you send your children to school. It's not a guarantee that they will come back home also. There's even a possibility that you could be laying in your bed and you still could be, may not make it because somehow somebody could shoot through your window and you get shot. So in this, after this one, I want to specifically focus on student teachers and victims of school shootings, all the mass shooting that is happening around and that, that we will take to heart, the Lord is our shepherd. So we go out in confidence that if it, it is his will that we come back home, that he bring us back home. Is there anyone who would like to start out off with, one, with, with a prayer? Uh, 
Father in heaven, thank you so much, almighty God. Thank you so much, almighty God, for the willingness of every soul that is participating here in this precious system. Thank you, Lord, for all that she has to share with us. May our hearts be open to receive it all. Please bless her and her family and all that she puts her mind and hand to. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving to you. Amen. Thank you. And then, Father, Lord, as we follow, as we want to follow you, Lord, as being our shepherd, Lord Jesus, we pray for the different victims of mass shootings out there. There's so many healing, so many trauma. Lord, every time we turn on the news, we hear in trouble. And Lord, just we pray that you will heal our mind of the different traumas that we have. We pray for our family. We pray for forgiveness. Lord, just we pray for also for our thoughts. In Jesus' name, amen. So my next category is going to be Jehovah Raha. This is the Lord who heals. We already discussed Je Jehovah as the existing, the one, the, the one that heals. We also, then Raha is, can be translated as the one who heals. Je um, according to Jeremiah 30, verse 17, Jeremiah 22, Jeremiah 3, 22, Isaiah 36, 6. Isaiah 61, 11, also Psalms 103, verse 3. Jehovah is the great physician who heals the physical and the emotional. So right in this one, we're going to pray for people that are sick physically, those that we know that are sick in the hospital, those have like the emotional problem, and those that are trafficked. And when we think of people at traffic, we're not just thinking about, we're thinking about everyone, the, the students, the boy, the woman, those that are in that get caught up in the whole uh, traffic situation. So is there anyone who would like to pray for this segment or you, would you like me to pray for that one? Okay, I, I, I get it now. I'm sorry. I will pray. Father in heaven. Thank you so much, God. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Please, please, Lord, watch over the sick. All, all of the sick, Lord, every age, every gender, every place where they are, every healing that is needed, whether it be spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally, or financially, Lord, or or. Every, every kind of disease and sickness, Lord, I pray for healing from your mighty hand. Put your salve upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you for being the great healer. Amen. Amen. So the next word of God that we're going to look for is Jehovah. Lord, um, Jehovah Yahweh. In the Old Testament, it occurs over 6,519 times. The word is used more than any other name in the Bible. The name of Jehovah is, the, the name Jehovah is a promised name of God. The name of, the, of, the name of God, which in the, Jew, Jew, the, the Jewish tradition is too holy to, um, is too holy to boy so they use Yahweh without vows. While Yahweh is introduced in Genesis 2, it, God did not reveal himself as Yahweh until Exodus 3. During the third century, because um, the Jewish people thought that Yahweh was so holy and they did not really want to violate the, the, the command, say, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. So they stopped using it and started going to Adonai. So in this one, we're going to pray for our family, our marriages, obedience, and our leaders. Is there anyone who would like to pray for this segment? Ms. Coach K, <clears throat> our Father, Lord God, um, because of disobedience, we have come short when it comes to family matters, God. And God, I want to thank you, God, that you uh, winks at our ignorance. Father, and I want to lift up single household, fathers with children, mothers with children, father, uh, blended families, Lord God, marriages that are blooming to 30, 45, 25 years, Lord God. I want to just lift them up, the actions to continue to be that cord that they need to hold on just a little while longer. 
Thank you for being our Abba Father and showing us how to love unconditionally. Thank you, Jesus, for being our big brother, uh, being our warrior and our savior, coming down and say, hey, I'm going to step in for my sister, my brother. Thank you for being a husband man that nurtures us and provides for us even before we were created as human beings. You had the Garden of Eden planned out, but because of disobedience, God, we, we, we have come short. So, Father, we ask that you implant your Holy Ghost back in us, that we would want to come into a meaningful relationship with you, the family of God, and with each other. And Father, I want to just say this prayer of humble and yet of confession, that God, we women, Lord, will realize that we are called to be help me, and that our first work, the Bible says, is to the world, which will help us to maintain to be a help me to our husbands, and a single woman to the church. And God, somebody didn't tell me that when they gave me uh, uh, instructions to be a Bible worker three months after I've joined the movement. But we need to tell the sisters that because, Father, our, our men are, are feeling neglected. And we feel God first, don't you understand? But, Father, they do understand, but they, the Bible says, whether we read it or not, that our household come first. Help me. And as the preacher said at Pelk this, this summer, paint your doorpost red. Lord, help me. Please help me to track back that I could put household nor in its proper place without putting it in your place. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So this next one, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. I like it, but it said it, it's only used once. Jehovah Jireh is only used once in the Bible, and it, it occurs in Genesis twenty-two fourteen with the Abraham when Abraham and Isaac went up to be sacrificed, and, God, and Abraham thought he was a sacrifice Isaac. But in my heart of heart, I don't think Abraham won because he tell his servants, "Say, wait here, me and the lad will come back." So I know in his heart he had to know that. He's not going to actually go through with the sacrifice. And I believe one could argue Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide, did not only occurs in Genesis, it occurs other places in the Bible. Because when you look at the, in 2 Kings 4, and it, um, it's the woman whose husband had died and she was dead. And he, she went to Elisha and Elijah said, what do you have in your house? And she said, oh, I just have a little oil. And he told her to go into the neighborhood and gather all these vessels from the neighbor. And her son went and gathered all the vessels. And when they came back, um, they just keep filling the vessel, filling the vessel. And as much vessel as they had gathered, from the neighbors, all the vessels were filled. And so she was able to sell all the oil. And in, in, in turn, she was able to pay the debtor. Also, when you look at Elisha, and after he had this high time with, um, with um, when he saw that God was the God on, on top of Mount Carmel, then he got uh, so afraid of Jezebel and he ran and he was in the desert. And you can see the Lord provided for him because the Lord sent a raven to feed him his meal every single day. The Lord provided for him. And um, we also, is there any other story that anybody can tell about the Lord provide uh, in, in their personal life or in the Bible sense? Do you have a story that you can say how the Lord has provided for you? Okay, since we since it's kind of early in the morning, I don't think we really wanted to participate in. What was your question, sister? I apologize. Is there anybody could list where the Lord has provided for them? They could share a testimony how the Lord had provided for them. Well, this is Coach K, and, and I'm happy to say this that uh, I have to get off a mission with a baby at five five o'clock every day and get down to the sixty first. Uh, General Council of the Seven-Day Adventists. I used to live in Co-op City. Anybody know about Co-op City? You have to pray for a park every time you go home. So what happened was is that I prayed for a parking space 
on Monday for me and another Bible worker uh, coach. And we both got a parking space. When we got out, we realized that we was parked right in front and in back of each other. And then yesterday I had to pray again because it's I'm getting down there at 5.30, right? And I got another parking space. So keep praying for me. I get a parking space, right? Amen. Amen. So a story for me about the heart the Lord has provided. Um, and it's little, little things. Like I know I had to, to do get some tires for my car. And then they tell me to go get an alignment. And when I went to get to the alignment, they were like, well, your car need about $1,500 worth of work. And I'm like, no, my mechanic didn't really tell me that. So when I look at them, like $1,500, they're like, but if you bought the parts and they bring, bring it back, it'll cost you $700. And I'm like, okay. So I went back to my mechanic. I called my mechanic immediately and I said, hey, I went to get this alignment done and they were like, I need this much money, this much work done. And you're like, no. So he told me to take it to this other place. And they said, no, you only need to get this done. Everything is fine. And I went to about five, six different mechanics and everybody keep on sending me the same thing. No, you do not give me that. And the Lord, the Lord provided for me that I didn't have to go with the first option. He told me to say, hey, why don't you get second opinion? Because you know, this doesn't sound right to you. Okay? You know your car. Yes, my car is old, but it doesn't need all of this stuff. And I'm like, and I didn't need all of that work. I, every single other mechanic I went to, they were like, your car is fine. Because, so guess what? I had to put all those parts back in the mail and send it back to the sender. And that's the way that the Lord has provided for me that I didn't need to pay $1,500 work on the car because it was just not needed. And just that's how that the Lord has provided for me. And even in this time with the inflation gas prices, the Lord is still providing for us. We're still living, we're still moving. Mm -hmm. And we have to trust in the Lord that he is Jehovah Jireh, that he will provide. We may not have everything that we need, but he will provide to sustain us throughout the day that we can continue to live. And I, I really like this Jehovah Jireh. So we're going to ask the Lord. Um, so this one is our open prayer. So we can pray for anything in this because it's the Lord provides. So we're asking, is there anything, any request that you have when it comes to the Lord provide? I'd like to share um, just before your prayer, the prayer, uh, how God provided for me in that though I've been living here in Alabama for these two years and every, every room in this house has fans, huge, gigantic fans and they're way up in the ceiling and I can't touch them. And they all have remote, remote push button, what have you. And so some of the down in the kitchen, the lights don't come on. Let me see. Yeah, sometimes the light comes on, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the fan comes on, sometimes sometimes it doesn't. And I have been toying over and over. Do I hire somebody? I don't really want to do this. I tried to uh, fix it myself, but I don't know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> so for the most part, um, I'm one who pinches pennies all the time. So yesterday, okay. So even my moving here, I want to cut the grass. I know that it's upscale and everybody hires people, but I feel like I can do this myself. So I bought a lot more. That's like the Amish people use, you know, like Amish people doesn't make noise, no gas, no oil. You know, you just push <laughs> the people ride by. They look at me like, what kind of lawnmower is that? But, you know, I'm doing my own yard, but I don't still know what I'm doing. So and, and it only costs $12. So after... <laughs> So, so after a year passed, I'm like, you know what? Share the wealth. God has blessed you. Share the wealth. Help that old man there. And so he he cuts the grass down. And so he bought his son yesterday. He fixed all, I mean, not all, but yeah, three of the, of the ceiling fans, one in my bedroom, in the guest bedroom, and two in the kitchen. And it really was not that much. He, he only charged $30. I praise God. I'm just rejoicing in Jesus that he fixed those huge 
lamps because I didn't know how to put my hand in the inside the thing. And the bottom line is, I, I don't know. I'm just praise God. And then the, the guy who cut the grass, he fixed my toilet because it had been leaking. Well, not leaking. I just can't stand. I can't sleep when there's noise. And so it takes forever to for the water to rise. And um, he didn't charge me very much. He, he took out the old toilet and put in a new. He Amen. did not charge much at all. And I am just praising Jesus all the day long. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Oh, you're there anyone else? Okay, since I'm going to pray for this one. Then, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come to for you today. Lord, we know that there are many people on the line that have unspoken requests, Lord Jesus. Sometimes we are so afraid to share, but Lord, we know everyone needs you to provide for our needs. If you don't provide for us, we are not going to survive. So Lord, whatever it is, it could be a simple, simple little thing are the big things that we need. Lord Jesus, we pray that you'll help us, that you'll Pick away the sins for our heart. Help us to remove everything that you can bless us. Please remember our church family. Please remember the GC, the leaders, our pastors. Please remember our members around the world. And not even our members, just everyone. The Lord, we just ask you to provide abundantly for everyone. Whether we ask it or not, Lord Jesus, you know what we need even before we need it. And some of the things that we ask for, we don't even need it. But Lord, we pray that you'll sustain us and you'll provide our daily necessity, oh Lord, for we do say thanks in Jesus' name, amen. So my last one is Jehovah Nisi. And this is the last one that we're going to close with. Um, it says there are no numerous instances where God has spread his hand over his hand of protection over his people and have kept them safe from their enemies. When you look in Exodus 14, with the children of Israel, they are leaving from um, Egypt and they, they are following the Lord and um, the Pharaohs and his army is, is right behind them. You see the Lord do some stuff, their wheels got stuck and there's a fire that is keeping them. And then the Lord opened the Red Sea so that the children of Israel could walk through the Red Sea on dry land. Now I'm trying to figure out how are they dry land under a sea? So he opened up that, and when the army of Pharaoh come inside there, he closed it up at them. We also see in Judges, um, some 6, 1623, God has kept the um, Gideon and his 300 men safe who were armed with trumpets and torch. We go into a battle, and yet we come, they come with um, the trumpet and torch, and they were able to fight at that the Midianites camp, numbering over 135,000 men. And the reason why I bring up um, Jehovah Nisi, because in this year, we were going through this year, and all of a sudden, there's this walk this war broke up between uh, Ukraine and Russia. And all of a sudden, all these people who were having a normal everyday life, their life is just suddenly uprooted. Mother, you see babies, stroller, people lost babies. So many people got bombed, people are displaced. Their place of comfort is no longer there. And so I want to remember, especially those uh, those that are in wars, are turbulent, those that are not living a comfortable life. Like they said, okay, as I lay my head down tonight, I'm comfortable. They're just in a place of transition and upheaval. So we want to remember those. And if there are any other requests, it's going to be the last prayer for this, sec this segment. Yes, I have prayer requests. This is a, a Sister Benita in Omaha, Nebraska. My prayer request is for, um, I have several prayer lists and a prayer journal, and um, they're extensive, but they're very important. So I, I ask for prayers to cover them in every situation, every person. So Father, did you want me to pray it? Yes, sure. Thank you. Father in heaven, I thank you so much, Lord, again, for this power and this privilege of prayer. Please um, cover every name, situation, um, and situation that's on my prayer list. 
go through my prayer journal, through the pages, through the situations, through the names, Father, through the families that need your divine hand upon them and get involved into them every single matter of every situation, Lord. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister Elder um, Tfedo, I'm sending it back over to you now. Oh, amen. Amen, Sister Kazarine. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing the names of God. You know, there's so many names of God. And when we get to know him intimately, we can call on him by those names as the need arises. We don't just have to say uh, one name all the time, but he appreciates us knowing who he is and calling him father. And he is so many names. So we thank you for bringing those names to our attention. And uh, we pray God's blessings on you and your ministry. Thank you for taking time out of your day and staying awake because you're on the night shift. So we thank you for being with us this day. So God bless you. As we transition out of this session into our next session, uh, we're going to uh, be listening to Coach K talk about Bible Discovery Center. Uh, let me just say very quickly, if you have to leave us at this time, please uh, come back anytime that the GC session is not having a session, an, a live session of their own. We are here with some powerful speakers and we have powerful speakers coming up midday today after we close out here this morning. We invite you to come back. But Bible Discovery, let's go ahead and pray out this session into the next session. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for this day. We've come to you on bended knees with raised arms in adoration and praise and also in surrender. And we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you bless us, that you touch us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. We thank you for what you've done for us in these last two days of sharing and giving, Lord. And we thank you for the speakers that you have sent. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do because your promises never fail. And Lord, we look to you for leading, guiding, and direction. And as we go through the rest of this day and the rest of this week, we ask that your hand be upon us and bless us that we not cause anyone pain. And if there's anything that is done accord, not according to your wishes, that you will let us know that you are will convict us because we are broken vessels and always daily need to be repaired. So we thank you, Father. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. All right, Bible Discovery Center is our next focus. And on behalf of Bible Discovery Center, Coach K and Elder Garrett, Illinois and Maryland came together and created something dynamic. And this uh, week we are celebrating uh, and the 61st uh, session of the General Conference is cause for celebration, amen? Changes are being uh, made and people are voting. There's no... Um, king or queen here. We have a democratic process and we pray that the Lord will continue to work with all hearts and minds that are involved in everything that is being done. Uh, we are the light of the world and we want to shine. And it all starts with us in our very hearts, in our very homes, in our neighborhoods. We can, even as one, make a difference. And I want to turn it over to Coach Kay because she is making a difference with Bible Discovery Center. I'm going to ask her to just share with you the components of it and just bless our hearts with the message that she has for us. Thank you, Coach Kay. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm super excited about what's getting ready to go today. Listen, we have a, a, a big schedule for this week, right? And so what happened, Mother Sharon, was that we had some empty spaces. So I just, just so I can remember which one were empty. I put BDC, right, in case no one took the opportunity to, to uh, talk to the world church and their local congregation. But guess what? The Lord had a ram in the bush for this time period. And it is none other than Denise Johnson. Uh, she from St. Louis, Missouri. And listen, listen, I didn't get her bio, but she's my friend in the Lord. She's my sister in faith, right? So I'm gonna tell you what I know about her, everybody, right? She is Denise Johnson, the bride, and, and, and I guess love of his life, Marlon Johnson, right? 
and they attend the mother church, which is over a hundred and some years old in St. Louis, Missouri, Berean. Come to St. Louis, uh, those who are listening, you wanna just take a break, call them up and maybe they'll come and get you, right? You got some needs, you might meet, met, we can meet. Lord, call us up, but listen, listen. So she, she's a mother, she's a grandmother, she's nurturing, right? And in her nurturing, you know, she's an empty nester. But from that comes this program she's going to talk more about is she. And she have a, um, a sisterhood of, of sisters that assist her. So I'm not going to take up any more time. I'm going to give it all that we have remaining to her. Uh, Dr. Johnson, my sister, oh, she's the family life. Her and her husband is the family life director of Central States Conference of Seven Day Adventists. Amen. And we heard our president yesterday, I caught him while we was on location, right? Y'all heard Pastor um, uh, Benoit ye yesterday. So hear her, hear her. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. The middle of the week. I am so glad that you are, that I could join you. I've been popping in and out over the last few days, listening to the powerful messages. Thank you, uh, uh, all of you for coming out, for coming in, Sister Petaway, Elder Petaway, and all of the individuals that have been sharing this week. Thank you so much, Coach K. Uh, I, I work hard to remember to call you by your, your uh, professional name. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> all righty. Uh, I wanna share with you uh, a ministry, you know, um, but before we get started, let's just open with prayer, okay? Father God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, allowing us to be women, Lord God. We know that there's some men on the line too who are giving us the responsibility to work toward the next generation. And so Lord God, as uh, I speak today, as those listen, may your Holy Spirit be in our presence and give us some tidbits that we can use in our everyday life as we interact with each other. These things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you see my shirt, I'm going to see if you can. It says she, she, she is an acronym that stands for supporting higher expectations. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but let me open with a scripture. I'm sure uh, you know this scripture well. It is found in Titus chapter two, verses three through five. Titus chapter two, verses three through five, and I'm going to read from the uh, NIV version. It says, likewise, this is uh, Paul's message to Titus, teach the older women to be reverent in the way that they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be respectful to their husbands, so that no one will mal malign the word of God. Let's take some time to dissect this text a little bit. Older. It doesn't say old. It just said older. It said, as we are mature women, that we have a responsibility to help the younger women. Uh, the word says reverent. And as I looked at reverent, uh, a lot of times when we think of reverent, we think of uh, being in the sanctuary and, and being in an atmosphere of praise and worship. But actually the word reverent means to be respectful, to be respectful in our lives. That means there's some things we don't do because we respect ourselves. And we want to make sure that we are living a life that will be, will not malign God will not cause disfavor on, on him. Uh, it says uh, slanderers. So what's a slander? Gossips. We're not to be gossips. And that we should not be uh, given to, addicted to much wine. It means, and it's not just talking about wine. It's talking about anything that can intoxicate us. Anything that can keep us bound with Facebook be it Twitter, be it, you know, back in the day when we have those soap operas on or looking at spending all the time looking at Netflix and, you know, Lifetime and leaving depressed after we finish doing that. Anything that's going to intoxicate us 
the council was teach them, not, don't do that, don't do that. Uh, they need to teach what is good. Teach what is good to the younger generation, to the women who are uh, coming behind them. And you know, womanhood starts with our girls because we need to train them to be the women that God would have them to be. And so we uh, started a program called She, Supporting Higher Expectations. Supporting Higher Expectations was started about eight years ago, and it was formed to address some of the challenges that our young ladies uh, enter in. But going on to continue di dissecting this text, to love their husbands, you're like, well, what does that have to do with young girls? Well, you know, to love your husband, the Bible says to love others as yourself. So it's important that our young ladies learn to love themselves, that they need to have positive self-esteem. They don't have husbands yet, but as they're preparing to be the women that they might one day be a husband, they might one day uh, have a husband, that they may one day have children, whether they're own biological children or whether there are children that are placed in their sphere of influence. There are things that they need to do. They need to first love themselves. They have to build positive self-esteem. They have to be pure. They have to be resourceful. They have to be smart, successful, concerned. And that's what she tries to offer. Uh, I don't know if I have the ability to share yet. Yes, you do. Thank you. I'm gonna share my screen and just give you a small presentation about what she is doing and how you can do this in your local church, your local area, how you can mentor young ladies. Let me see if I can do this right. I, I sometimes have challenges with the technology. Um, okay. She, supporting higher expectations. This is a girl's mentoring parent support program, parent support ministry. This was a ministry that was started by five ladies who were sitting around after church. And instead of complaining about our young ladies, what they would do. It's a program that supports parents in the physical, social, intellectual, and spiritual components of their girls. And this journey to higher expectations continues. From the day that God formed our young lady, the he designed for them a purpose, a future. He also had a plan for each of them. community, the homeless, the elderly, and 
that they indeed are this, uh, successful, they can be a sister friend of friendships that they develop in childhood. How to use their talent for Jesus Christ. They are pure. that we have. Uh, their song was, uh, was going on. Their song is, she's a lady. She is smart and beautiful. She is healthy, concerned, and successful. She's a sister and a friend. She is talented and pure, but most important, She's the daughter of, a, of the king. So what can we do as women of God? What can we do to share with our young ladies? You might not have an actual program like she, but you can do one thing, you can pray. And so we're gonna take time right now to pray for our young ladies. Uh, there might be someone specific that you would like to pray about, or you might just want to talk, pray with our young ladies in general. I'm going to ask uh, Elder Linda Womack if she wouldn't mind helping me right now and praying for our young ladies. Yes, our Father God, which art in heaven, I thank you this morning for the precious blood of Jesus that gives us access to your throne of grace. God is just an awesome thing, which you have done through your um, saint this morning, Dr. Uh, Johnson. Uh, God, my, I'm in tears, God, for the meeting even we just had last week. Well, I thank you for uh, this person, whoever's launching this, that this is exactly what we need. God, you are connecting the dots. You are doing something supernatural that our minds cannot even conceive, but it's coming uh, to flourishion. It's, it's manifesting itself. God, God bless Dr. Uh, Denise, uh, the Heavenly Father, to share this more because this is the lifeline. This is the hook as we go fishing. This is the bait uh, to get them in. They're crying for help, God. I do not know what to pray for, but my my spirit is welling up because I know they so desperately need us, God. Uh, all of my steps that you have done to go uh, down. I have an appointment tomorrow, God, that you have assigned to me to go to these young girls up here that are prostituting their bodies, God, just to survive. And here she shows up and shows out with this display. I give you glory in advance for what you're going to do, God. Uh, thank you in advance. Forgive us all for our many sins, for shortcomings, for taking our hands off the plow and being slowful uh, at times, God. Thank you. I give you glory, honor, and blessing. And now unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask to think according to the power that's working in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, as we, uh, as I was saying, there's some things that we need to do as our young people, as our young ladies. And you might not have an organization like she. She has been on hiatus for about two years during the pandemic. However, we are finding that uh, we are restarting. We restarted about three months ago. And what we're doing is not only reaching out to children that are or young ladies who are part of our church family, but we're reaching out to the community and we're having uh, individuals who are interested. We, uh, We'll be doing some things with this Sunday we're doing She is Cultural, where the young ladies are going to go out and look at a, a Shakespeare play uh, and just doing different things. Uh, we are starting a book club where we're reading Sons and Daughters of God. There's a component that says Daughters of God. And uh, we're working on every Monday evening, 
we with the things going on this week, we didn't do it this week, but our young ladies are reading a chapter and we're learning about how to be daughters of God by the book, Sons and Daughters of God. Uh, our children, we have three age groups. We have our lilies. Our lilies are our young ladies between 10 and 12 years of age. Our roses from 13 to 15 and our orchids from 16 to 18. And those young ladies, uh, we've seen them. We had some alumni that have gone on to college. Some of them are mothers and they're doing an excellent job with parenting their children. We're just thankful that God has given us this, that we can be able to help with our young people. As I said, it's uh, that you might not have that organization, but I, my challenge to us is that we need to reach out to our young ladies. Uh, as I said, it might be with a group, but it might be something that you do one-on-one. -on -one. That young lady that you see is struggling in your home church, in your neighborhood, at your school, that you reach out and be that Titus chapter two woman. That Titus chapter two woman who is reaching to the younger women so that they can be ultimately the mothers, the, uh, the wives that will honor God. You know, God has given us a lot of times as we become older in our age, we feel like there's not much that we can do anymore, but there is. There are things that we can do to continue to honor God, to be able to be of service. Many times uh, we, but the thing that we all can do, as I said earlier, is that we can pray. We can reach out to someone that we know, someone that is concerned uh, and encourage them we can become our own little catalyst to be able to honor our children, to be able to teach them about a God who loves them. So again, my challenge for you today is to find, think about that young lady that you're having. We're gonna have another uh, time of prayer. Uh, if someone would be willing to pray for our young ladies, to pray that our women will be able to get catch the vision to reach out to another younger lady who needs that mentorship. This is Coach K. <clears throat> Our Father God, we want to thank you, God, for how you have orchestrated the ministry of today to us, your people, and to take it to the world. Father, we want to pray, Lord God, that we nurture the seeds that you have in the movement call our children, our, our cradle role, our um, primary class, Lord God, our, our youth class, our young adult class, Father. And, 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 and Father, we, we, we want you to show us how to connect with them because you know exactly how they have been rewired with the world, with technology, Lord God. We tell them to get off the line when they want to have fellowship with their friends, but we tell them to get on the line when we want them to have fellowship with their teachers. And, and sometimes it's confusing. You want me on, you want me off. So God, we just want to know how to reach them. Fill us with your Holy Ghost that we may witness to them well. And Father, I have a special prayer for my niece, Michelle, who mom went to sleep and she is lost. She lived with her even now. So God, I'm asking you, show me how to reach her. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And God's going to do just that. He's going to do just that. He's going to show you exactly how to reach. As he's going to show each one of us how to reach. As I said, the most important way that we reach them is praying for them. Because what the Holy Spirit can do is something far greater than we can even think or imagine. So our challenge today is to pray for our young people and ask God to give us a vision of how we can reach those young people, how we can be uh, the mothers that, the surrogate mothers, the aunties, the grandmothers even to our children and our young, uh, our young ladies and our young men. Uh, we, uh, we, are, we have a brother organization that my husband 
and many of the men uh, have is called MEN, which stands for Mastering Everything Necessary. And the young men have learned things like auto mechanics. I saw one of our brothers on just a few minutes ago who popped in for a minute. He was teaching the kids how to take care, the young men, how to take care of their cars, how to change the oil, how to make sure they can make sure the glass doesn't beat all up so that if they're driving, uh, doesn't get all wet. So if they're driving, they can still see. There are many things that we can do for the younger generation, be them men or be them women. Uh, there are also, if you look at that same book of Titus, there's counsel for the men and how they need to take care of the young men. So as we, as men and women of faith, we need to reach out to our children, our youth, and be what they need to be. If you have some information, if you know, uh, we do do, uh, we are right now still doing some virtual visits. So that if you have a young lady that you would like to plug in to she, reach out to us. We can, uh, we are, we do tape our uh, programs because we're dealing with children. This isn't on the, uh, the internet per se. Uh, we do have a closed private Facebook page where we do stream our programs. As I said, because they're children, we have to protect them. Uh, Elder Womack talked about the young, servicing young women who are um, caught up into trafficking. We don't want our children to be victims, so we don't do that. But if you have an interest, you can just go to Facebook. Our Facebook page is She Supporting Higher Expectations. And uh, as we uh, see who that person is, we do welcome them to our Facebook page where they can get announcements, where they can be part of our meetings. Again, I wanna thank you for giving me the opportunity to be able to speak to you about a ministry that I believe uh, we can emulate in our own ways to be able to minister to our young people. So before I leave this morning, I'd like to close this with prayer. Father God, thank you so much for giving us the gift of influence. Lord, you give us many ways to reach our children in our churches, as well as the children in our community. There are many children who come in and out of my office every day who don't have direction, who don't have mothers who have the time uh, to spend with them many times because they're working so hard, Lord God. So Lord God, may we as women, may we as women of faith, may the men as men of faith be able to reach that new generation, that generation who needs to know about you. So Father God, I ask that you will give each one of us a desire, a passion for letting our younger generation know that they have a Father God who loves them and has plans for them. Lord, I ask that you will be with the leaders of our organization, uh, that you will strengthen them, that you will give wisdom. Lord, we have an outing plan for Sunday. And so I'm asking that you will give us nice weather and that the young people will be able to fellowship and know that there are people who are concerned about them. Lord, be with this ministry on the line, be with our general conference session, be with the visitors who are coming into the city, keep them safe, Father God, keep them inspired. And may they be your witnesses, not just by handing out tracts or giving books, but Lord, by smiling, by being kind to the individuals in their hotel rooms, by being pleasant to the restaurant staff, by even maybe helping those who are homeless as they go about the city. Lord, put your protection around this session and may St. Louis never be the same because your people from around the globe, around the globe, have been in this city and have taught, taken the world, have let the world know that there's a God who loves them. Mm -hmm. These things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll turn it back Praise over to Lord. you, Coach K. Well, well, thank you. And, and I just have a question, uh, 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 Sister Johnson. Is, is, yes, is, is, uh, 
is uh, the men's uh, ministry. He ready to present maybe later this week. We got no, they're, 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 they haven't reactivated yet uh, after right. the pandemic. All right. Well, we, we, hey, they, we welcome them to the platform, but maybe another time with Bible yeah. Dis- Discovery Center. Amen. 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 I'm going to turn it over to um, Mother uh, Minister uh, Petaway, Mother Sharon. <laughs> that was just a wonderful presentation, Dr. Johnson. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, certainly we'll be in touch with you on another level, as a matter of fact. Uh, but God bless you and continue to keep you as you work with the young ladies. Okay. Amen. 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 Have I just a wonderful to, day. Thank you. You too. I just want to give a few announcements before we dismiss. I know that we have the general conference session that will be starting in a few minutes, and we want to take advantage of that. We want to be armed with knowledge. And there wasn't a whole lot of uh, detail given about what was happening with this session, except that we knew that there was going to be a uh, nomination of a president. And it was no surprise that uh, Brother Ted Wilson is our president again. Uh, But there are some things that we do need to be in prayer about. But Go into, see what's going on and pray that the right decisions are being made because they affect our social rights. They affect our rights as a people, as a gender. And whereas we're not uh, chauvinist, we're not um, feminist, we are God's sons and daughters and we want it to be treated fairly. We know that that will happen once Jesus comes, but we're going to try to make a difference where we are right now. God says to occupy until he comes. So I want you to come back and visit with us. Take advantage of the services that will go on at 1230 Central. The, all these times of Central Time, uh, 1230, we will have with us um, Ministerial Director of the Allegheny East Conference, who will be speaking to us. His name is Gene Donaldson. At one o'clock, we will have Elder Richard Gordon Jr. of CPC, uh, who has his own automation business. We also then will have Dr. Robert Salter that will end that session, a powerful session, which this will be the third session in a four-part series. You can catch the other two sessions on YouTube, but please come back and join with us. And then for this evening, we'll be coming back at 5.30. 5.30. All of these times of uh, Central Standard Time, we look for you to come. We look for you to enjoy. And one of the other things I'd like to share with you is there's an opportunity for you to go to the photo booth. Go to the photo booth at gcsession.org and get your picture taken. Submit a picture because it's going to be this huge, I mean, in my mind, I can see this huge virtual exhibit of all the people from all over who've submitted pictures. Take your families, take pictures and send those pictures in and represent uh, your conference, represent your church and represent your family. So with that, I say, thank you. Uh, We'd like for you to come back, but we'd also like for you to visit the website of Bible Discovery Center and see all that we have to offer. God has blessed us with components. As you can see, the, um, that is the actual virtual booth at the GC that Coach K has behind her. So when you go into the virtual booths at the GC session, put in Bible Discovery Center, look at the booths, and then click click on When We Pray Ministries. Click on Restore Life. Click on Bible Discovery Center. Click on Evangelism, uh, Evangel Living. Click on the journey, and you'll be able to see the detail. Beautifully put together website by uh, Elder Garrett Christie, and we just want to thank God for him and all that have worked so hard to pull this together. So with that, I say, I bid you adieu. Please make the sessions as many as you can and find out what's going on so that we can have information to educate our youth and to let them know who we are and what we stand for. So God bless you. I will see you at 1230 Central Standard Time today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mother. And I want to lift up this. I want. Can y'all see what I'm holding up? These are prayer cards that I got from our guests at the 61st General Council of Seven Day Adventists. And guess what? They are the ones that's hosting us. These are the workers that's down there. So listen, St. Louis, go down and talk to the workers. Let them know, answer that question. One lady, she said, I'm not going to, I don't want to fill it out. 
It's just so many churches and this. I said, we're a Christian. Are you a Christian? She said, yes. I said, well, amen, we're one. She said, but you know, people teach this and they teach that. I said, listen, we're all one in Christ. There's two churches, the church of God, Jesus Christ, and the church of Satan. And then I got to say this to you. She says, well, I, I, um, she said, I just don't know. I said, well, let me ask you a question. And we're talking about teachable moments, right? Listen to this. I said to her, you have siblings, right? She said, yes. I said, now do all your siblings follow exactly what your parents said or your mother? Think about that uh, hot water cornbread. And, and, and mama say, put this ingredients in it, right? And you go to your sister's house and say, that don't taste like mama's. But you got that one sister that knows how to make it just like mama. Well, for me, that sister have gone to sleep. So I got to get in the kitchen and I got to take all the ingredients and try to figure out how to get it like mom. And that's what we have to do in the body of Christ. And I'm talking about all folks. We got to get in our Bibles through Bible Discovery Center, if you choose, and, and, and see the ingredients to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So I tell you, come on back. Enjoy Jesus with us to the World Church and guests. Welcome to St. Louis, to Baltimore, to, to all the cities that are represented at Bible Discovery Center. Thank you, everyone that participated. Enjoy Jesus. Let us pray. Father, into your hands we commence our spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Maranatha. 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 Sister K, I mean, Coach, yeah. Coach K. That's fine. Sister's fine. We're family. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I was looking at the map. I mean, the speaker yesterday, Edmonds, was phenomenal. I almost got in the car and drove up there. You're not that far away from me. I come mean, on down. I got a room for you. Oh, praise Jesus. Because yeah, you're on. telling me the rooms are like $1,000 and what have you. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm less than eight hours away. So um, well, you could come down, come on down. Let me know when you're going to get here. I will do that. So anybody else want to room? I think she took the last one. <laughs> but, we got, but guess what? We got a lot of floor space. We got a lot of land. You can bring your tents. You can tent out. You can bring your RVs. We got a lot of land behind our home. Oh, so you're not, a, if you come, you may not get a bed inside, but you sure can I sleep travel like with a, Jesus under the stars. It's okay. I sleep with a sleep. I, I travel with a sleeping bag. No worries. No, you got a bed. You got the last bed. Amen. <laughs> Praise him. Praise him. Come on down. Come on. I will be there another. before the weekend is over for sure. Amen. If I wasn't Welcome speaking in the morning, body. I'd be there tonight. If I and, and, and if my yard ain't enough, I got a park right across the street, right? That's open space. So we got plenty of room. Come on down. And we All right, you know what? Down. Amen. I might see you before the end of the day. I see you, huh? Okay. Well, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Praise God the bless. Lord. Hey, we have not because we ask not, right? I'm and so we grateful. Family, if there's a need, do a godly deed. And this is God's land. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Well, All right. Bye-bye. Take care. I'm Take out. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.